Hello, hello, and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy, and I am going to be your host this evening, <laughs> as always. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to be working on uh, modeling. Uh, so we're primarily going to be working in the Aspire software. However, that being said, some of the things that we're doing, such as modeling clipping and um, uh, combining models and stuff, these things can be done in Desktop and Pro. The only part that can't be done in Desktop and Pro is when we actually start kind of uh, building components, two rail sweeps and things like that. That is an Aspire function. But I really wanted to... Uh, Kind of show this process i'm doing some modeling uh for the spindle tv uh training subscribers uh i've got to get their december projects out and uh, i'm doing some modeling and as i was modeling i thought you know uh when it comes to this frame that i was making i thought that uh, it would be a good video to show uh and uh so um we're gonna do that now Everything that um, the uh, software shows, um, just follow along, and you'll, you know, as I get into things that are not, you know, that are that are that are that not. Hold on, let me rephrase that. If I as I get into things that are, you know, able to be done in desktop and pro, I'll let you know. But even if you don't have Aspire, stick with me tonight, and uh, let's. Um, uh, let's let's go through this because it's good to know and it's good to learn, uh, especially when it comes to clipping, clipping uh, and, and clipping components because that can be done across all three softwares, and it's pretty cool how you can clip away parts of models that you don't want to create other models and things. Um, and so, uh, man, welcome from Australia, Stephen Rice, and welcome everybody else that's jumping into the live stream. Uh, I see a lot of uh, uh, familiar faces, uh, David Kinsey, Darwin Bradley. Hey, Darwin, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Ronnie Probert, uh, and so many. Uh, that's great. There's a lot of you there. And um, uh, so uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you. All right. Now, big key thing. Let's switch over to the, um, the computer screen for a minute and uh, if you see me looking away from the camera it's because I'm looking over at the stream that's to my right uh, and uh, we'll get there but let's switch over to the computer screen and let's get me in here um, let's go key on and oops Oops. All right, stand by. Got to make myself smaller. You're going to see me flying around because I hit the wrong button, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so stand by a minute. Let me move myself down to this corner. And of course, goofy me hit the wrong button and lost my setting bear with me all right we'll set that as set a and then really quickly let's go to pa all the way to the other side watch this Ooh, we're gonna jump over here and we're gonna set that as b all right let's go back to um let's go back over to this side <laughs> How fun is that? And we'll set that to A. Okay, so there's me switching back and forth, and then of course full screen. Woo, isn't that a good time? All right, sorry about that, I hit the wrong button, and uh, now we're, we're here. Okay, what I wanted to show you is, uh, for those of you you're viewing <laughs> with, uh, with the uh, screen, uh, in your video here um, that you're watching, there is a little gear down here. And uh, if you click on that little gear, you'll see quality. And usually by default, it's like either set to auto or you know a low number. Uh, go ahead and uh, if your internet allows you um, and, and you have the option, select 1080p or at least at a minimum 720p. And that'll give you a nice high resolution. It won't be so blurry for you. 
and all that wonderful stuff uh, in your quality. And um, that way, it, everything is nice and clear for you. Okay. We, uh, well, I think it was last week that I was out sick. So I apologize about missing last week's class. I believe it was last week's class. And the week before that, we did uh, the Powell wedding frame, which by the way, for those of you that asked, we have not carved that sign completely, both of the signs yet. I will be posting pictures on Facebook when those projects get done so you can see them. Uh, but uh, we had some people that uh, had some, a hard time uh, viewing uh, and things, uh, or it, was, it wasn't too clear for them. So set that quality, pump it up, and uh, everything should be nice and clear. All right, cool. Okay, so uh, hey, Ronald, hey, Sylvia, hey, Miss Behaven. All right, so there's got a lot of people popping in. Thanks, guys and girls, for joining me tonight. I really do appreciate it. All right, so um, let's take a look at uh, one of the frames that I was working on, and then we're going to actually go through and uh, create our own from scratch. So good times. Let that file load up. All right. First thing that you're going to notice is um, when it loads up is in the top right corner here. I have a lot of different like frame profiles. Now, unfortunately, I can't use a lot of these because of the undercuts and things like that. But I can use a majority of them. And some of them that I like that have undercuts, I can alter them. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of different vectors of different kind of frame layouts uh, and things. Um, but a lot of them have undercuts that I really can't use uh, with the CNC, but I can alter them and change them accordingly. Uh, now, if we go into the 3D view, uh, let me go into the modeling, and you're going to see how we create these components and things over here. But in the modeling, I'm going to turn off clipping. And... Let's turn on the different levels. We're going to talk about how to create levels, what they are, and uh, basically ways, a nice way to separate our design and our components. And let's get uh, this turned on. So here's an example of one of the frames. Now, this is one of the frames that uh, one of the model files that's going over to the uh, Spindle TV uh, subscribers for their uh, December projects and things, but um, this is what we're going to be talking about making, how we can combine models, uh, how we can create uh, two rail sweeps uh, and things so that we can create components uh, and model frames. Now this, of course, uh, when I make it, it's a very large file, um, but within the software, I have the ability to clip. So like for instance, on this rectangle here, if I click that rectangle and I come into my level four here and I turn or apply that clipping and basically it's going to clip away everything but this section here. I also want to do it on level one as well. Apply the clipping. And now I have um, a corner component that if I turn off all the other corners, work with me other corners one two and three now I have a, comp a corner component that I can work with and make any size frame that I want now of course with that corner I also need a straight piece that I can combine together uh, to make any kind of frame I want so I also have a vector for that so here if I turn this off and on my level, I come in here and apply that new vector that I've, I've clipped. Now I have you know a straight component that with those two components combined in any which way, I can create any size frame that I want. And that's what we're going to uh, talk about today uh, we're going to model, we're going to do some model, we're going to combine some models to create some really decorative frame, uh, you know, pieces and things. Uh, but then I'm going to show how we can start to build up our clip art library uh, with these different components uh, that we could pull them in, 
kind of assemble it and make you know whatever size frame we want we can scale of course and all that but um, a lot of times we don't have to now when it comes to the clipping uh, creating the component levels uh, combining models and things all of those can be done across the board desktop pro and aspire it's just the actual where we're constructing and creating a component from scratch or from a drawing and, and what have you that that requires the Aspire software. So don't sit there and say, oh man, I don't have Aspire, this doesn't account, you know. Uh, there's gonna be some lessons for everybody to learn in here, so hang out with me tonight. Uh, it's a cool Tuesday night, we'll, uh, we'll get started. All right, and um, uh, thank you, uh, Sylvia. I thought it was a pretty nice frame too, because um, I was hoping that, uh, that people would like it. All right, let's go ahead and now that you see uh, what we've got, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these uh, kind of vectors here, and I'm actually going to copy them. And then I'm going to go ahead and close out of um, the frame. I didn't mean to close out of the Aspire software. So let's go back into a new Aspire program. Lord, oh Lord. All right, let's create a new file. Now, uh, for this, I kind of, uh, you know, on the frame, it could be whatever size we want. If you want a narrow rectangular frame, if you want a square frame, whatever the case may be. But normally, I start out with a uh, kind of a square frame, and then I'll, I'll steal the components I need to be able to make any size rectangular frame, narrow frame, and anything that I want. Now, the key thing that I want to uh, say is when we're in when we're building models in Aspire software, we want to build in the highest quality possible, the highest resolution possible. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to click on create a new file. By holding that shift key down in my job setup, the modeling resolution, it gives me those two extra options uh, here for um, extremely high and maximum resolution. Very rarely do I work in a maximum resolution. Sometimes when there's a really high detailed model that I'm creating, then I'll work in the maximum because that resolution quality, the number of pixels in our 3D view, uh, if our model has any pixelation, uh, that will translate to the quality of the finished cut. Okay, so even if you weren't creating models, when you're working with models in your software, at the very least, uh, in your standard without holding the shift key when you click job, set up, or create a new project, I recommend a very high resolution, uh, which is about 8 million pixels. Uh, that way you have less pixelation in your actual model because that, tra that pixelation translates to the actual quality of the finished cut. Now, when I'm building a model, I generally work in the extremely high resolution, which is uh, 8,000, so very high is 4,000. Um, I work in the very uh, the extremely high, which is 8,000 pixels. Maximum is 16,000 million. Man, I keep saying thousands, million, 16 million pixels. I'm working with 8 million pixels right now to create the model, and that is enough. Uh, that is enough. So, uh, but like I said, if you're just working with models, you know, in your designs on your on a daily basis, uh, the very high resolution, which is 4 million pixels, is recommended. Uh, but um, understand this if I went online and I purchased a model and if for some reason that model was low resolution I can't make it a high resolution model I can't I can't crank my resolution up to the maximum uh, and bring that model in and you know all of a sudden it is uh, you know um, it's a high resolution model Unfortunately, I, I'm kind of on that particular part of the design, that particular model, I'm limited to the quality that it was built in by the creator. So when you're purchasing models online, Design and Make is a great website, of course. You know, it's associated with Vetric. Uh, it's a great place to get high quality resolution models. eBay, Etsy, CG Trader, things like that. Uh, those are great places to get models. And... Um, uh, uh, you want, uh, you know, high poly count or high resolution models. Uh, you don't want anything that's called a low poly count or a low resolution model because you can't change it. You know, you can try your smoothing it out and, and things like that, but you just can't change it. Um, I'm going to give you an example 
Uh, we're gonna go with a uh, extremely high resolution here. I'm gonna go with a project that is 24 by 24 by one inch thick, just uh, for to begin with. And um, I'm gonna material surface is good for for zeroing out because I'm kind of designing today. Uh, and then the um, I'll start from the center. That's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. All right, cool. Now. I'm going to import, I'm going to go to my modeling tab and I'm going to import a 3D model. Uh, and this is a 3D model that uh, I purchased uh, from uh, online and it's considered a low poly model. And I want you to, when you first, when it first comes in, I want you to look at all of the, uh, the I, guess, I think they're called polygons or whatever, uh, but you can really see the... Uh, kind of uh, the design definition. Uh, let's orientate that. Let's go with the front here. Uh, let's size this down to fit on my board. So let's go 23 and click apply and let's center it on the material. And let's zoom in and you see all the triangulation of those polygons, you know, that that model was designed. This is a very low quality model. Um, and uh, if I uh, come in here and let's uh, bring this up a little bit and click OK, when I bring it into the actual software and everything, this is the model itself. And you can see all that. I don't care. I'm in an extremely high resolution right now. Uh, but you can see all of the triangulation of that mesh. The mesh is what creates that body of that model and um, no matter what I do I could try to smooth it out uh, if I apply some smoothing to this model uh, let's see what happens if I smooth it out and yes Crystal I am doing well thank you uh, I think it was more exhaustion than anything uh, last week uh, uh, I don't you know just a temperature and just a headache and just exhausted. Uh, but if I go to smooth this model out, I'm gonna crank it up to maximum, right? Um, and I can smooth it out. That's the maximum I can smooth that model and I can still see the triangulation in that model. Let's see if we can zoom in and see if you can see those actual triangulation lines. There's nothing smooth about this model uh, as far as its actual overall shape and design. So even though that I'm in a high, extremely high resolution, if I were working with this model and I imported this model like I did into that design, it's not going to import my model in a high resolution if the model itself is of low quality, right? So you want to be mindful um, when you're purchasing models and stuff. If you see anything that says low poly or anything like that, that's a low poly count, polygon counts, that triangulation. And uh, might be great for gaming environments or you know 3D rendering and things like that. But when it comes to uh, modeling with CNC carving, it's not that great, right? So be uh, mindful of that. And, and that was uh, just a lesson for anyone that goes out and purchases models because whether you import them into Desktop Pro or Aspire, um, the quality is only gonna be as good as the creator created it, right? All right, so let's get rid of that model. I just wanted to uh, talk about that uh, and everything. And um, let's, uh, while we're uh, getting ready to start laying out our design and everything, let's answer a quick question. Um, let's get back into our 2D view and get centered up here. And let's see here. Uh, Jay says, a question, could you not start with a standard and change to extremely high when you're finished and save calculating time? No. Um, when you are uh, creating the model uh, from scratch, the model is being created when we're extruding and all those poly counts and everything and, and that triangulation, uh, it's being created based off the resolution of your three-dimensional view that we're building in. So if we start off with standard and we build that model in, model in 
in standard, we're building it in that very low resolution. I believe standard is one million pixels. We're building that model in a, in a one million pixel environment. And we can't sit there and, you know, build the model and then change it to extremely high uh, in the end. Um, uh, and then go back and, and you know, and, and calculate our tool paths. We just can't do it. And I'll give you another reason why we can't do that. Uh, let's say, for instance, that... Um, I, you know, set my uh, resolution to just very high, right? Instead of extremely high. And I click OK. Uh, when I come in here and um, let's, uh, let's get a design in here and stuff. And uh, let's just create a shape. Doo, 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 doo. I'm just going to create a shape on this. So we just basically, uh, let's get this filled in here. I just basically created this dome and all. Uh, now, let's go back to our job setup. Okay, let's go back to our job setup. And let's go back into our model resolution. Notice those two options are now no longer there for me to change to extremely high. They're gone. Okay. So they're only available at job setup. Those options are only available at the job setup. Okay, so we can't start off with a standard because we're building that model in a low resolution uh, and then we can't just change to extremely high at the end uh, because number one, uh, what we build the model in, that resolution, that's what it is. And number two, um, once we set that job set up and we start uh, going, there's no going back, right? Okay, all right, let's hit uh, cancel on this and um, close out of here. Let's close this program don't save the changes and again i'm going to hold the shift key and click create a new file i'm going to change to extremely high and i'm going to click ok and now we're ready to go all right so uh jquest hopefully that answered your question um and everything uh harvey uh matches matches oh, sorry harvey if i screwed up your name uh, let's see here. On design and make, it states eighth inch ball nose tested or sixteenth inch tested. Uh, it is like high or extremely high. Is it is that like high or extremely high? <laughs> uh, basically, that's your two most common go to router bits: your eighth inch tapered ball nose or eighth inch ball nose, and your sixteenth inch tapered ball nose. Um, and so, uh, what that means is is they have uh, created their designs and they've ran them both or they've tested them with both those bits. And the detail was still very good uh, with those options and everything. Uh, so uh, that's what that means. It has nothing to do with a high quality or anything. It just means that uh, you know uh, that the level of detail in them uh, you can you can achieve that level of detail with your eighth or sixteenth inch ball nose. Now some models with very high detail or high resolution and everything uh, you would you know in some cases you would step down to a thirty second inch tapered ball nose, which has a 64th inch uh, radius on it, uh, you know, to get really high detail in those small little detail areas and all, uh, where an eighth or a 16th just can't fit, you know, to give you good detail or good, good cuts. Uh, so you go with a smaller bit. What that's saying, uh, Harvey, is that, you know, they've tested it with both the eighth and the 16th, and you're able to get into those areas and get a decent, you know, good cut, right? A good cut. That's what it means. Um, all right, cool. And uh, uh, hey, Baron. Uh, yeah, I know Baron's like, hey, welcome from sunny Florida. It, it was it's 52 degrees, which for you guys up north, that's we're not complaining. That's not bad at all. You guys and girls up north. Uh, but uh, you know, the other night, the other day, I think it was 26 and then 32. Uh, for us down here, that's kind of cold. So yeah, Baron, I get the inside joke, but yeah, man, um, very cool. All right, let's get into it, guys and girls. First thing that I want to do is I'm going to draw my frame. So I'm going to start with a rectangle tool. And I have, I, I highly always encourage to have your snapping tools turned on. That's the uh, geometry snapping and the smart snapping. Let me explain why. Let's turn off the uh, smart snapping, just the smart snapping. And I'm going to draw a line. Okay. Now, when I draw a line, I'm going to literally, with my mouse, I'm going to come in here and fiddle around and get to that zero angle, right? Um, you know, and the, you know, getting like 
coming here, let's slow down nice and slow. All right, went there we go. Uh, you know, wait, I grew, I drew that line, great. Okay, no big deal. Now with smart snapping, when I go to draw that line, I can snap, snap right to that zero, right? Uh, you know, I can snap right to that 90. I can snap right to that zero. I can snap right to that 90, you know, um, let's get uh, snap right there to that 90, so on and so forth. And I'm not fiddling around, right? Uh, so uh, smart snapping and geometry snapping means that when I'm drawing something, uh, I can, my geometry or my board and all, I have these little snapping points. Like in the corner, if you see a little square box pop up, let's see if we can zoom in that square box pop up there. That means I can snap to that point, right? Uh, and then I also I can I can highlight that point, not click on it, just highlight it, and it'll give me kind of a snapping line, so I can draw another shape that's right in line with it, or I can snap there and you know draw off that and that kind of thing. So smart snapping and geometry snapping, I recommend those tools always being on. Cool. Okay, let's close that tool and uh, let's go Control Z. All right, let's get rid of that line. All right, so with my rectangle tool, let's go in here and draw a rectangle. Snapping diagonal, basic, I just snap to that corner, draw a diagonal, snap to that corner, and there's my first rectangle. Sweet. All right, uh, we're going to offset this inward. Now, I want my frame pieces, uh, I want my frame parts to have a width of like two and a half to two and five eighths inches wide. Uh, so I'm gonna offset uh, inward and let's start with just two and a half. So I'm going to go two and a half. I want sharp corners with that offset and I want to create that offset. Now I have two vectors. I have my inside and my outside rectangles and these are going to be my path. This is going to be my path for my profile to follow uh, when I create my profile. Now if you recall earlier I copied all those profiles and they're kind of they should still be in the memory of my clipboard when I copy them so I should be able to come over here right click and paste and they all pop up on my screen here right from the other project so uh, now I have them in this new project and I can kind of work with them and everything right cool um, <laughs> yeah uh, crystal I agree it is nice to work in uh, even though I have heaters cranking in my shop, it is nice to work in instead of, you know, my shop is a tin box, if you will. It's an all metal shop building and in the hot sun inside the shop, even with the AC cranking, it's still about 110 degrees and you're dripping sweat all over your projects. It's terrible. So yes, I agree with that. I'm not going to argue with that point. <laughs> it is comfortable to work in. Except for first thing in the morning when your body's like, whoa, wait a minute. Where's that heat at? Uh, I like a cool 72 degree temperature. All right, uh, enough about the weather. We're here to learn about design. All right, um, I've got a lot of different profiles of uh, that I can work with. Now, when, when looking at these type of profiles and things, um, we can't do undercuts. Uh, let's kind of zoom into this one. Uh, you know, I can't do this undercut or anything like this. Uh, and so I gotta be mindful if I'm gonna choose a profile and everything that uh, you know I may have to make alterations and stuff to it right well I'm gonna be adding some in, in corner embellishments if you will uh, corner embellishments and stuff so uh, I'm going to uh, pick a profile that will kind of work with that corner embellishment uh, but also if I don't see anything I don't like here kind of in my little collection I can draw my own right uh, so we're going to look at it both ways. All right. So the first one is I'm going to come in and grab this big profile right here and let's get that over on the board and let's zoom into it. Okay. So everybody can see it. All right. When we're working with a profile, um, we do not want the lower line, uh, the underside of that profile, just basically kind of the top profile. And of course, remember, no undercuts. So I'm gonna go into node editing mode and I'm going to go ahead and cut my vector here. And I'm gonna cut the vector over here in the far corner. 
and I'm going to remove that lower vector. Okay, so that leaves me with this profile. Now, <clears throat> on this profile here, um, I'm, I've got to imagine this being swept all the way around uh, my, between my two paths, my two rectangles that I just created. And um, I've got to be mindful that uh, on one of these corners, I'm going to be creating this embellishment, whatever it might be, this, you know, this kind of decorative embellishment on the corner. And so um, are there any elements that I want to kind of remove, if you will? Um, I'm going to keep this front here, but I am going to go into node editing and I'm going to grab these two vectors and I'm actually going to use my right arrow key on my keyboard and I'm going to bump that out a little bit further. Okay, I'd like to have a little bit of more of a lip there, right? So I've got that. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and keep this, uh, this little uh, kind of transition here between this arc. I'll keep that. I definitely want this sweep right here, but uh, and I want this kind of height, but I want to get rid of this step, if you will. So I'm going to go into my node editing, and I'm going to uh, basically put my mouse right on, always have your mouse pointer on the line when you're wanting to insert a point, uh, delete a, you know, or delete a span, those are called spans. Uh, a line arc or curve between two nodes is referred to as a span. So uh, whatever we want to uh, get rid of, make sure, you know, you can't be out here, you know, uh, you gotta be on the line. And uh, that's also when you're selecting something, right? Get that mouse right on that line or somewhere inside where it can select. All right, let's, uh, let's delete that span there and also this one down here, okay? That gives me this opening here and I basically want to join this uh, with a kind of a smooth curve. I could even do a chamfer, a straight line or whatever, but I think I'm just gonna join this with a smooth curve and kind of create that curve there, but I don't want it so, you know, uh, robust. I want to be a little bit more flexible. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this node and pull it back some. And I'm going to pull this down a bit. And I'm going to just kind of transition into a curve that I think uh, looks good. Let's uh, pull this back a little bit more. And so I'm going to go with kind of that, uh, that look there. Looks odd, bear with me a second. It looks a little odd. Let's, let's pull this up a little bit. And let's pull this up straight across. All right, now on my sweep here, oops, sorry, on my sweep here, if I go pulling and turning on this, I'm kind of messing up my sweep over here, right? So what I wanna do is I want to turn, I wanna put my mouse over this node and I wanna turn the smoothing off. What that'll do is it'll lock out one side so that I can deal with the other side without affecting it. Uh, so I wanna kinda just come in here and then if I wanted to, I could turn that smoothing back on and it'll kind of smooth it out for me. All right, so there we go. So that is gonna be the transition that I want. On the back side here, I'll go ahead and I'll keep that. Um, I will, uh, I just have to be mindful that there's gonna be a model sitting in here on the corners and uh, we'll see how that affects it in a moment. All right, so I've got that profile. Let's get out of node editing mode and let's move it over here. Now, key thing, my profile needs to be the width of my, my sweeping area here. And if you remember, I offset that inner rectangle two and a half inches away. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my size tool and currently right now my width is 2.454. So hey, I'm close, uh, but I'm not at two and a half, right? So I wanna go ahead and adjust that. Now, if you also remember my material thickness that I set up was one inch thick, right? 
so I'm a little over on my height. So I'm gonna uncheck my link XY and I'm gonna make this 2.5 on the width. I'm gonna bring this down and I don't wanna be right at one inch. I'm actually gonna bring this down to uh, three quarter and I'm gonna click apply. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna kinda condense that profile. And I'm fine with that. I still have my overall shape, but now it's condensed to the size of the material that I want, right? And, um, you know, and everything. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Now let's say that we were, we didn't, you know, we didn't have any, you know, cheating little graphics, right? Where we can just go grab one and alter it and we had to create our own. Okay. Let's start off with a rectangle. I always start off with a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be width two and a half. Uh, height, I'm going to go three quarters, right? And I'm going to create that rectangle. That's going to be my start point. I'm going to come into node editing. And again, everything I'm doing here up to this point, guys and girls, can be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire. Now, when you're creating moldings and stuff, everybody, Desktop Pro and Aspire has the molding toolpath. So you can create profiles and you can create frame moldings and everything with that molding toolpath. All right, in node editing, I want to get rid of that bottom line just like we did before. So I'm going to delete that span because we're working with this profile here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this node and drag it down. Let's kind of get, is that uh, good? You guys turn up your resolution uh, and everything um, if you can, so you can see everything nice and clear. But uh, I'm going to pull this down a bit and on the line here, I'm going to insert right about there another point. And then up above that, I'm going to insert another point. And then this point, I'm going to kind of drag up. Now, once I drag it up, um, I'd like it to be kind of a, a, a slight chamfer here, a slight chamfer. And then this straight up stepping up and then whatever it's going to do. So I want to align to this node and I want this is the node I want to align so I select last and I want to go left to right and left to right is my x-axis so I'm gonna hit the letter X on the keyboard and it'll pull that those two nodes into alignment right select the node that you want to align to first then select the nodes you want to align second and X moves that line left and right Y moves that line up and down okay cool all right so on this I want to come down of course, deselect everything and then select only the nodes you want to move. I'm going to pull that down. I don't want to be up too high. I don't want too big of a step. Just a nice little step there. And now on this straight line here, I'm going to right click and turn that into a busy a curve. Uh, and now I can kind of start to curve some things. Um, now, as I start to transition into this curve, I'm going to go to right about here and I'm going to insert another point. And now I'm going to kind of start playing with this curve a bit. Okay. And um, let's get a little bit more of a kind of a, almost a little bit more of a rounded curve there. And then as it comes in right about here, I'm going to insert another point. A little bit above it, I'm going to insert another point. It would help if I inserted a point. There we go. Uh, and I want to pull this arc up just a little bit. You know, I still want that kind of sweep there. Uh, up here on this one, I want to kind of transition. Again, if I select this node, the bottom node first, this one next, hit the letter X on my keyboard. That'll pull that into alignment and everything. Um, and let's soften that transition up a bit and then here I'm still kind of in a busy a state you know I could turn that back into a straight line uh, it's a crooked line right now so let's get this one selected then this and hit the letter Y this time and that'll pull that up into alignment uh, and uh, let's go ahead and insert a point here and one right behind it let's pull this up And on the back side, uh, I'm going to insert a point right in the middle. 
come here and again I'll select this node shift key select this node and hit letter Y up and down get that in a line and back here I'm gonna do just a arc and I could go either way with my arc just don't create an undercut uh, don't accidentally create an undercut but I want to kind of create a little bit of a arc here like a little hump and these two I'm gonna pull down get that okay this is an undercut right here we can't have that uh, so I'm gonna take this those two nodes and I'm gonna use my left arrow key and kind of pull them out a little bit and then I'm gonna pull this down a little just to get a nice transition there all right so I would like to kind of soften up these edges a little bit uh, on these two corners so I'm gonna go into my fillet tool I'm just gonna create a quarter inch kind of radius and I'm gonna add that was quarter inch was way too big for that one let's see all right it's way too big for that all right so quarter inch let's go 16th inch radius and there we go all right 16th of an inch is too big for that one let's go ba -ba -ba -ba. a 32nd oh three one two five okay and also there as well now it looks funky here but it'll make a pretty nice little frame okay so now I have two profiles. My big thing is, is I've just done some drawing with this. So I've changed its overall size, you know, that two and a half by one inch or three quarters. And um, let's go to our uh, size tool and let's see where we're at. So I'm a little overshot on the two and a half. So we're going to change that to two and a half. And I'm a little over on my three quarters that I want. Uh, so I'm going to kind of squish that down a little bit let's go 0.75 you can make it whatever you want but i'm just reducing that down a little okay now it looks like an ugly profile but it's going to make a pretty decent little frame um, when it's all said and done and again we're going to be using this one up here you know but uh i'm just showing you how you could draw your own profile all right let's sweep both of them and see what uh let's see which one we like better all right so we're going to select the outside rectangle first. And uh, here, let's do this real quick. Let's get me uh, over a little bit further out of the way. Wonderful. And let's get center screen. All right, let's take uh, this layer and let's take these two vectors and move them to layer one. And let's turn off that other layer. We don't need it on right now. And let's get center screen here and kind of zoom in a little bit. Cool. All right. Looking at my screen, you guys could see that. All right. So we're going to select that outside rectangle first. Then the inside one holding the shift key. When you're selecting more than one item, hold your shift key. And then I'm going to go into my modeling tools. Now, this is an Aspire feature. We're going to do a two rail sweep. We're sweeping our profiles between two lines whether those are you know joined or closed vectors or whatever we're sweeping it between those two paths so a two rail sweep tool I'm gonna use my two selections as a as the rails my drive rails to sweep and the key thing is is you see these I don't know if you can see these little arrowheads we want those arrowheads to be facing for both our red and our green line to be facing the right direction you know the same direction if they're facing opposite directions, then it's like taking a towel and wringing the water out of it, right? It's just gonna twist that model. We don't want that, okay? So make sure your paths are the same direction, all right? All right, let's, uh, now that we've uh, selected use selection, we've got our little arrow pass there. We're gonna choose our profile. Let's choose the one that we just designed and we're going to sweep it between the spans and we're also going to scale it uh, in those cross, between those cross sections and things. And uh, this is going to give me nice sharp corners. It's going to look like a mitered frame when it's all said and done. Uh, we're going to go ahead and apply that. 
and let it sweep that path all the way across. And we could do it in two different directions. Um, so let's uh, go look at our 3D view. Okay, at the frame we created. Let it uh, focus itself. Let's kind of get into this corner. So we've got that, you know, step up that slight chamfer up, then that round and then into that arc. And then our nice little bead rollovers and then kind of a rounded over outside edge. Let's kind of see if we can zoom into that outside edge a bit. So we got that nice little round over outside edge. That is this, oops, let me get on the screen. That's this profile here that we just created. So it looks goofy, right? As the profile, it's like, oh, I don't know how that's going to look. But, uh, you know, it, it makes a very, uh, a very nice frame. Okay. Now, let's say that I wanted to completely reverse this, right? And I wanted, uh, I wanted to, I wanted this to be the inside and this to be the outside where it's thicker on the inside and it gets thinner as it goes out. I could do that. I could go into the uh, two rail sweep here. Uh, I could, um, you know, on my cross section, um, I could come in and right click on this node and reverse the rail and reverse the rail. I could even, you know, on my uh, section here, let me see here. Yeah, that's all I need is reverse the rail. Let's go ahead and create that. Let's click apply. I think I actually have to mirror. I'm an idiot. I think I have to actually mirror on this one. Uh, in the molding toolpath, I can reverse both uh, my rails and stuff. I don't think that did anything. Let's look at the 3D view. And yeah, that didn't change it. We actually need to mirror ba -ba -ba -bam, doo, that path right there. So let's uh, close that tool for a moment. And let's mirror this and face it the other direction. So we're just going to flip it horizontally. There we go. And now it'll sweep from that direction. This being the inside of that frame. Let's go into here. Uh, let's turn off that component for a minute. Select our frame. So reversing the rails didn't do anything. Um, in this case, uh, we had to reverse the profile. All right, let's select our two rails, open up that two rail sweep tool, use that selection, grab our profile and click apply. Now there's no guarantee what this one will look like. Um, it's gonna be uh, a, a definite uh, unique shape. And let's look in here. So on the inside we have the high side and then Come on out to the corner. Let me get a corner up on the screen here. So we have that high side with our little round over and our beads that we created there into that sweep down to that chamfer. So even as, uh, let's get back into full view and straight on, uh, you know, not a bad looking frame in that direction as well, right? So however we wanted to uh, create that, um, we could right cool all right now let's uh let's get rid of what should i remove alexa stop <laughs> alexa's uh helping me out here um let's go ahead and delete these mm -hmm. alexa stop listening to me there's a microphone off button on Echo Smart Speakers, which electronically disconnects Alexa, the stop. Microphone. Alexa, stop. I'm in a meeting. <laughs> There's a microphone Alexa. off button on Echo Smart Speakers, which electronically disconnects the microphone. Stand by, ladies and when gentlemen. Push, Me and Alexa are fighting. Appears, and your device won't process any sound. Alexa, stop. Okay. Me and Alexa are fighting. That she's, she's ignoring me. Jeez. Typical. All right, everybody. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and delete that. Um, and uh, 
<laughs> let's uh, let's start off. Let's go ahead and in our two rail sweep here, let's choose our outside uh, vector and then our inside. And then we're going to select this. Uh, we're going to use that as our selection. There we go. And we're going to use this profile here, uh, this profile here. And we're going to apply that now because that profile is facing this direction, you know, from left to right, this is going to be the outside. This is going to be the inside. Okay. And that's what I want. Uh, so we're going to click apply. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Sorry guys. Uh, that's yeah, that's terrible. Uh, if you got your speakers up loud or anything, uh, if y'all have, little miss a in your home uh she'll respond to that so sorry if i set off any of your uh <laughs> uh okay uh let's go ahead and let's look at our 3d view and let's look at this frame okay and uh, let's kind of get uh in a full-on straight on view and let's turn it into a perspective where we can kind of see the detail a bit. Okay. So this frame has this nice little uh, outside kind of arched edge. Uh, again, if we let's split the view for just a moment. And let's zoom in on that. And let's zoom in on this corner. Okay, so this little outside edge here, this radius, that's what we've got there. Uh, then it kind of steps up into this shape here. That's this step up and this shape here. This, it looks odd because of the shading and the shadowing here, uh, but it actually is that arc where it comes down and up. Uh, and then our little step up lip to a round over edge and then out to that edge there, right? So that's our uh, profile for our frame uh, and, uh, and everything. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, well, I have to say this. She is the most attentive woman in my life. <laughs> I'm single, so I can make that joke because she's the only woman in my life besides my mother, you know, and things like that, but, uh, and my sister and my friends. But anyway, she, she listens to everything I say <laughs> when I meet her, she cheers me up and tells me jokes, all that good stuff. Okay. Let's, uh, now that we have our frame. Okay, this is going to be uh, the basis of our kind of our structure here uh, and everything. Uh, this is going to be the basis of our structure. So we've got our frame. Now I want to start building on that. I'd like to add some embellishments uh, in the corners. I really want to kind of bring those corners out. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, with something decorative, you know, think on a smaller scale, right? We have... Um, Valentine's Day, I think, is the next holiday coming up. Uh, I think I believe that's in February. And, you know, a nice decorative little frame with hearts on it or whatever the case may be, uh, you know, or something, uh, you know, really nice for, you know, a family portrait for your spouse or, or, you know, picture of the kids or picture of yourself because she loves you so much or he loves you so much, whatever. Um, think about this you know when you're kind of designing and stuff now i'm not designing for valentine's day or anything i'm kind of just making a, a nice frame a portrait i'm in the uh uh you know uh, kind of that uh mood where um i'd like to take some of the paintings that i've got and maybe put new frames around them whatever the case may be i can do that and when it's all said and done, I'm going to be taking sections of these components. This is a component, this model that we just created, that's a component. I'm going to be taking a corner section and a straight section 
and I'm going to be exporting them into my clip art gallery so I can pull that corner in, pull that straight section in, and I can make whatever size frame that I need. If it's square or if it needs to be rectangular, I'll be able to adjust it and stuff, uh, you know, based on the two components. Now, unfortunately, that function, being able to export a model out uh, and, uh, and save that component, that is an Aspire feature. So uh, when we get to that part, we won't be able to do that. But guys and girls with desktop and pro, uh, you can just save your file, right? Save your design file and kind of just keep working in it. All right, so let's get back to our full screen view here. And we've got our, our model component. Now I want to start kind of organizing my component tree. Okay. My component tree is uh, over here. And it's called a tree because, you know, it's got roots and foundations and we can add more levels to it and things like that. You know, so I guess component tree is a good name for it, but it's where our components are. Now, level one is what my frame is on. I can rename level one if I want to. And I'm just going to call this my main frame. Main frame? Main frame is good, right? Uh, so that'll be my level one. But I want to right click on that and I want to insert a new level. Okay. And on this new level, I'll go ahead and uh, name it. Uh, so let's uh, rename this level. And we're going to call this my corner one. I'm going to literally have four components because I might want to clip away certain corners and things. I might want to do something different on each corner instead of the same pattern all the way across, whatever the case may be. But I'm going to create a level for my main frame. And then I'm going to create a level for all four corners, right? So I'll just call this uh, corner one. And I'm going to go LL, lower left corner, right, uh, lower left corner, correct. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's insert a new level, insert a new level, insert a new level. So I've got three more there. And on this one, we're going to rename this. Uh, this will be corner two. And it's going to be my... Uh, upper left ul rename this one this is going to be corner three this is going to be my upper right uh, so ur and corner four and this will be my lower right okay so uh, now i have those levels created and when i start making these components when I if I'm going to do one component I'm going to just work on one and then I'll I'll copy it around to the other three corners and then I'll move everything into their appropriate level to keep things separated and stuff okay all right cool during this process if any of you have any questions go ahead and ask right now's the time to ask and stuff if you have any questions uh, uh, I can pause for a moment to answer your question things like that I believe Okay, uh, there is a question. Let's stop right here for a moment and answer it. Uh, Rodney Roberts asked us a little while back ago, are you doing two-sided cuts with your frame? Okay, so Rodney, with this particular style frame that I'm making, uh, I'm going to have a lower box frame. Let's see if I can illustrate this in the software here. Imagine if you will, uh, let's go to my drawing tools. I'm going to do a side view kind of illustration. All right. I'm going to have a lower kind of a box area, not like a shadow box, but just a little bit of depth. It's not going to have a whole lot. It's going to have the four sides uh, and a bottom or a back. And um, my main frame will be the top layer that attaches to that to that front uh, and there'll be uh, little uh, connections that I can like little L brackets basically that I can connect to that I could take off to change my picture or my glass or anything like that if I were doing this where it was one frame where I was going to be flipping the project over and cutting 
the uh, center out uh, and cutting a pocket where my glass and picture and all that stuff is going to go, uh, then, um, uh, then yes, that would be a two-sided job. In my case, uh, the little box that I'm going to be making um, for this particular frame, uh, it's going to be the size that a canvas can fit into. Uh, and uh, like an art canvas uh, and everything that a canvas can fit into and then the frame's gonna go over that uh, over that box and it's gonna attach to it and that's gonna be the face of it all right so no this will not be a two-sided project for this particular type of frame that I'm making um, but I could always turn it into a two-sided project and do the backside and all that stuff um, if I wanted to make it that kind of picture frame where the back comes off, I put, you know, my, my glass and my picture, and then I put that little back cover back on, but I'm actually going to have a smaller frame underneath, uh, a, a boxed frame underneath, and this, think of this like the lid, it's going to be the cover and everything. So, uh, Rodney, hopefully that answered your question, and all right, all right, cool, I think... That was all the questions that we had. Oh, Charles Wallace, very cool that your daughter carved her first part. I didn't see that in the beginning. Thanks, man. Awesome. Congratulations to her. Uh, very, very cool that she did her first project. And I don't know how I helped. I can't remember. We I talked to so many people today, Charles, so I probably helped with your machine or something. But awesome on that. Very cool. All right, let's get back into it. Uh, so uh, pick a corner, any corner. It doesn't matter where you start from. We're going to just start building our model uh, and things on the corner. And I'm actually uh, going to use some of the clip art that comes with the software, right? What is that clip art good for? It's good for kind of building models and components, right? Uh, so I'm going to go down to my... Um, Objects and people, you know, I could do, I could do, uh, you know, a little cherub on all the corners. I could do all kinds of things. I could make it a holiday frame, uh, you know, and things like that. I could make a little Valentine. I could put hearts on the corner if I wanted to, right? Um, you know, just whatever you want. But I'm actually want to go into my decorative uh, designs here, and I want to kind of look for a component that a model. Uh, that's another name for a component, right? Uh, I want to kind of look, and let me, my head is in the way. So let's switch over to side B for a moment. There we go. And um, on my components over here, uh, I want to find something because I'm going to, I can do some clipping and I can, I can eliminate parts of that component. Uh, that I need to and stuff, but I want to find something that would be fitting for a corner embellishment, right? So I would like to utilize this. Uh, let's grab, yeah, let's grab this one here and I'm going to drag it on the screen, just drag and drop it, get it on the screen. So we're going to use that. And let's come down here. I need something that where the two kind of they look like they belong together. Let's see. Let's go with this we'll drag this one on the screen all right let's go back down and get that it wasn't quite on my right here let's drag that on the screen oh i have two choices what are my two choices they both look the same all right we'll grab that one and um Let's give ourselves a second option. Mm. 
let's go with seashell and vines that doesn't go together um, I believe that are gonna be that are that is going to be the two options that I'm working with yeah um do, 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 do. let's go ahead and grab this one too we'll throw that on there on there as well all right so now I've got uh, let's get back into full view here uh, and of course let's turn that layer off I've turned that layer off one time already let's take all of my objects here I'm selecting all my objects and making sure that they are on layer one making sure this component is on layer one because I'm turning off that frame once again and always click and make sure the layer you're working in is the active layer all right and uh, all right very cool so now I have if we let's kind of spread these out so we can see what we have for as far as our choices Okay, and let's go into the 3D view on those. And so these are the options that I chose to kind of build with. And uh, we will see uh, what comes of it. I may use only you know two or three of them, uh, but we're gonna go from there. And um, yeah, let's go into, uh, that's a good thing that someone said, hey, save early, save often. Let's go save as. And we're going to go into, um, uh, this will be deco frame class one. Let's create a new folder. And uh, today's date, I believe, is 1-12-21. And we'll save that project in there. Okay. Very cool. All right. Let that save this component, and then we'll move on. So thanks, Troy. Thanks, uh, uh, Darwin. Thanks, everybody that's reminding me. Hey. Uh, all right, there we go. <laughs> Let's, uh, I appreciate you guys and girls for pointing that out to me. Okay. I am kind of looking to see, yeah, I guess these will be my good two, three choices. If I don't like something or whatever, that's where I go and I might, you know, start building my own, uh, you know, or uh, I can go online and see if I can find a model and things, but we're gonna work with these uh, from my existing clip art. Everybody's got these in their clip art. They should have a, uh, an example of that. All right, let's start off with this one here. Let's go into our 3D or our, our 2D view and let's start off with this one here. And what I want to do is I want to uh, grab this and kind of get it over into this corner. And I want to literally snap it right to that corner. Okay. So I want the center of that object to be snapped right to that inside corner. And I'm going to hit the number zero or no, I'm sorry, the number nine on my keyboard. Actually... Let's go the other direction. I'm gonna go this direction here and I'm gonna hit the number zero key on my keyboard and I'm gonna rotate this around. There we go. Kind of into this corner. And uh, that'll be good. Now I'm going to size it down. So I'm gonna size it. 
so it kind of fits within my frame. Okay. All right. Uh, from there, uh, we're going to, um, if we now looking at uh, the corner that I created, let's look at the 3D view and see what happened here, right? Right now, it's in what's called an add mode. Add mode, meaning it's like taking a sheet and draping it over a car, right? It's go we're adding that sheet to that car and it's going to form that shape of that car that's underneath it. So this is forming the shape that's underneath it, right? I want to make sure that in my corner, uh, first off, I want to move these components, this particular uh, component right here, this flourish. I want to move that down to the corner I'm working in or up to the corner I'm working in, which is my uh, top upper left, right? My upper left. So I want to move that into there. And on that component level, I want to make sure that the combined mode is merge. I want the two items to merge together. Okay. And I want to make sure that my component is also kind of, uh, you know, set to merge, which it is. And then on my main frame, I want to make sure that that is also merged. I want, I want that to merge with the, you know, kind of whatever's underneath it, which there's nothing underneath it, but still we'll, uh, we'll set that, uh, to merge. All right. Now I need to start building up building up this shape uh, because I got a big sweep there. So I got to start building up my shape so it's sitting on top of the corner, not down in the corner, right? Uh, so I want to come in and uh, on that shape, I want to go into the properties and I want to give it some base height. So let's go with uh, a quarter of an inch to begin with. A quarter of an inch. Kind of start building it up. Okay, let's go a little bit more. Let's go uh, three eighths. And that is almost good. I Probably let's go. Let's go a half inch, and then I'm probably gonna do some tilting. So, 0.5. Okay. Um, matter of fact, since I got to do some tilting, let's go half inch, or let's go three eighths. Let's go back to three eighths. So 0.375, and then what I'm gonna do is I need to tilt, tilt this model. I want to tilt it on the back end. Now, when we're tilting, I'm not gonna use the components uh, properties over here. I'm actually gonna use the component properties in the 3D view. I like working with that in the 3D view. Uh, everybody has this, Desktop Pro and Aspire, uh, when you're working with models. If I double click on the object in here, uh, somewhere on that object is going to be a little blue box. And this one happens to be hiding right down here and when I click on it, it's going to show the properties of that model. And I don't know if you can see that blue box. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's kind of hiding right here. Let's tilt this a little bit. Oops, I moved it out. We'll put it back. Let's move it out a little. And uh, let's put it back. Control Z. We're getting there. All right, let's tilt this and kind of come down, come down, zoom out a little bit down and I don't know if you can see that little blue box right there but if we click on it you know that gives us this properties window right here that we can kind of floating property window to move around all right let's get over into the um, full screen here and let's see if my big old head is in the way let's see if I can move myself over a little bit more go all right now I'm gonna tilt this oh Laney quit quit dragging the model around I always click on the model and end up dragging it around when I don't want to drag it around 
Um, let's get it back to where it was. Control Z is a wonderful thing. Okay. All right, by the way, moving around like this, this is panning what I'm doing here. I have a roller wheel on the mouse. Uh, I'm pushing down on that roller wheel like a button. It allows me to pan. If you don't have a roller wheel in your mouse, the control key and your left click key will allow you to pan. Hold your control key down while you're holding your left mouse button down and you can pan around. When you're not holding the control key and you're just pressing your left mouse button, that is kind of like a tilt and all of that stuff, okay? Um, and everything so all right so we should be able to see these properties here now when we are tilting a model one way or the other we have it's it's like sticking a wedge under that model okay so when I click my mouse when I go to set I'll check off tilt and I go to set my mouse turns into this anchor and you'll see a number one next to it with a little plus sign the first place I click is going to be the thin part of the wedge. The second place I click is going to be the thick part of the wedge. So if I click here first, that is going to be the thin part of the wedge. And if I click back here on the back side of the model, that'll be the thick part. And I'm going to be pushing that back in up because that's where the thick part of that wedge is, right? And then I can change the degree of angle and everything. So uh, I want to click here on the front of the model first. And then you'll see that my little anchor gets number two next to it. And back here, I'm gonna click a second time. And now I can set my degree of angle, you know, and I can tilt that model, right? Okay. And I don't wanna tilt it too much. I just want enough tilt that uh, the backside is above the top of that frame. So I believe uh, let's go with three degrees. I believe three degrees would be enough, but we'll find out here in a second. Yeah, just like that. Okay. All right. So wherever you click, and that's why I like working in the 3D view when I'm doing tilting or fading. Uh, and by the way, let's kind of talk about fading for a second. Let's go back into that properties tool. The fade, the first place I click is the area I want to keep. And the second place I click is what I want to fade or kind of disappear into another model or what have you. So I'm fading that model away into something else. Um, that's what the fade does. And so when it comes to tilt, first place you click is the thin part of the wedge. Second place you click is the thick part of the wedge. And when you fade, the first place you click is the area kind of you want to keep. And then the second place you click is what you want to fade away into invisible, whatever it's going to blend into, right? When you're blending and stuff. Okay. Uh, and uh, you should all be able to see that now. I believe my head's out of the way. I'm looking over here. All right. Y'all see this? Okay. All right. Uh, and um, very cool. Let's go ahead and... Let's get me out of the drawing screen. Electric slide. I keep hitting my set button instead of. Um, there we go. And let's make myself a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. All right, so now that I'm over here, we should uh, kind of, I couldn't slide smoothly on that one because I hit the wrong button again. So that's the kind of the difference between tilt and fade. Tilt and fade. All right, so now I've got this, uh, this component here. It doesn't look like much right now. We're gonna kind of build it up, build that corner embellishment up. Uh, the next thing that I want, the next model that I want to work with, um, and by the way, if I didn't want this to be so thick, let's let's look right here. Um, if I didn't want this to be so thick right here, I could on that um, the properties. I can actually go into the properties here. 
Uh, I could reduce that base height. Let's say that I wanted to bring that down to a quarter. Oh, too many decimal points. A quarter, just to reduce this front right here so I don't have a whole lot of base meat there. Um, let's go, let's go 3 sixteenths, 0.1875. Okay, and uh, ooh, a little bit of green there. That green means that part of my component is being hidden uh, by there. I don't want that, so let's bring that up just a little bit. 1.19 uh, should get me up uh, above that. Okay, I lied. It's going to be 0.2. There we go. That'll be good. I, I, I don't mind that bit of green there. Now, back here, I do mind, right? I need that back up, you know, so now I need to change my tilt angle. So I'm going to kind of increase my tilt angle a little bit to get that backside back up over the frame. So let's tilt that. And so 0 0.6, 0 0.60, let's see if that does it for me. Yep, we'll work with that. Okay, all right, now, wonderful, wonderful. All right, so now I'm kind of building into that, I'm kind of working with that frame, okay? All right. Um, let's pause here for a second, answer a quick question. Uh, can you move your big fat head to the right and electric slide? Thanks, David. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he just asked if I could move over. Uh, let's see. Lenny says, Hey Lenny, my question has uh, nothing to do with tonight's lesson, but how did you change your 3d background to black? Thanks. That's a great question. So under edit up at the top of the screen options. In the options window, you can change your background to a solid color. You can change your background to a gradient color, which is kind of, it's kind of gradient in the default, or you can actually put an image in the background uh, in things. And so uh, on that, I've got my background color and gradient color set to black. You can change those color settings to whatever color you want could be white in my case I have black um, uh, so that hopefully that things kind of stand off with a little bit when I'm showing you guys and girls but that's where you would change under the 3d view settings your shading background style is it gonna be a solid gradient or image and if it's gonna be a color you know what's that color gonna be all right so that's where that would be okay cool all right now I'd like to uh, now get into this model here, this model, and I'd like to have this model kind of, uh, this leaf model kind of come into this corner, around the corner, and I'm gonna have it come around both directions uh, in things. And, and so um, the, let's turn off the main component for a minute. The main component is my main frame, so we can see the model I'm working with here. But um, I'd like to, you know, have this model kind of blend in to this background some. And I'm keeping it back from the line purposely because I'm going to be adding a draft to this. And that draft is going to create kind of an angle. And uh, when it's all said and done, I want it to come right to the line. So I want to kind of stay off that line a little bit. And uh, let's go into the 3D view. And let's look at what I'm looking at here. Again, it's in add mode, right? It's like draping a sheet over that. You know, it just kind of follows the shape. I don't want that to be in add mode. Uh, I do want this flourish here. Um, I do want to put that down in my corner that I'm working on, my upper left corner. And I would like to merge that component with the other one. Okay, I want it to merge. 
Now let's spin this around. So we can kind of see what we're doing here. And I want I need it to, when this is very low, one's real high, one's real low, right? So I'm gonna be building up the base height of this in just a minute. Uh, but at the same time, I also want, uh, I want to kind of, I want it to look somewhat like it's meant to be there, right? For, for whatever reason. And so I think I'm going to write about here. Kind of where this, this pedal, we'll call this a pedal is kind of overlapping there and everything. So let's look at my 2D view and make sure I'm still kind of away from my border. I am. That's good. Now I want to mirror that exact position over to here, right? Over to here on the corner. So I'm going to take in my drawing tools. I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to draw that line uh, at this corner to this corner right here. Space bar to finish. And I'm going to extend this line out a little further. Okay. So just kind of a straight line right there. All right. Awesome. Now that line is going to help me mirror this tool. Now in my modeling, I want to make sure that I'm in my corner because any component that I create or whatever, I want it to fall into that proper corner level. Okay. So make sure that that's highlighted because that's what we're working in that uh, that's my upper left corner and so I'm going to go to my mirror tool I'm gonna select this floral component here and I'm going to select the line and I'm gonna choose the option to create a mirror copy and flip about that line okay so that's going to create that uh, other side for me. All right, cool. All right, let's uh, close that and let's look at our 3D view. Okay. And um, so this is what we've got so far. Okay. Now on both of these flourishes, these two flourishes here, I would like to uh, go into their properties and build up the base a little bit. I want to build up the base height some. Okay. Uh, I need to build the base height up because it's not going, they're not going to sit on top of my frame. When I turn that frame back on, they're merging with that frame and they're buried in it right now. You see that? So I need to kind of build up my height a bit and uh, so I'm gonna, on my base height I'm gonna go uh, 0.5 and I've got to be mindful on my base height that you know I don't want to go too high right and now I'm building up over this okay so one of the things that's fighting with me on this corner is the the big arch that I have the big arch coming up you know here and that's something I got to work with I chose that design and, and that everything so I'm gonna kind of work with it because I like it and uh, we're gonna make it happen so I can't have a half inch base height because that brings me up above the top of this model I can only go so far so then I'm gonna have to do some tilting and some fading <laughs> tilt and fade uh, let's go with uh, a point uh, two on that base height okay and right here right here I'm just a little low you can see the green where part of my model is just a little low I don't mind that it's a little low but I don't want it that low I want it up above now as far as the back end here I'll do something uh, some tilting with that uh, in a moment uh, I can't really add this. I don't want it following that contour and everything. I want to kind of build up to it. So I'll do some uh, tilting in just a moment. Uh, but before I do, I want to get my height right. Get my height right. So let's go with, uh, let's go a 0.28. 
And what I'm focusing on is this part right here, okay? So uh, 0.28 is a little much. Let's see if I can sneak in with a 0.25. Yeah, 0.25, uh, that'll work for me, okay? All right, now I need to um, I need to do a little bit of tilting and a little bit of fading. Um, first thing I need to tilt, I need to kind of bring up this back end a little bit over here. Uh, and um, bring in this uh, back end a little bit over here. But then when I do that, it's going to raise it up kind of over this part. So I need to fade it. So let's do that. Let's, uh, I'm going to, when I get one just right the way I want it, then I'll go ahead and mirror it to the other side. Uh, so I'm not uh, dealing with both at a time. So work with one model at a time. Let's work with this lower one since it's kind of right here in front of us. Double click on it in 3D view and there's my little blue square. I'm going to click on that to get the properties of that window. Okay, and let's start with the tilt, 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 woof, that was a southern twang come out of there, the tilt first, Lord of mercy. Um, and we're going to hit set, and thin part of the wedge, thick part of the wedge, right? So I want to, here, I want to click first, I want that to be the thin part of the wedge, and back here, I want to click second, I want that to be the thick part of the wedge, all right? And as I adjust that tilt, okay, I'm going to have to do some overall adjusting when I start uh, playing with this. Let's increase that tilt just a little bit more. Okay. Now from here, uh, let's bring that down. Let's go 7.8 on the tilt. Okay, let's bring the base height up to 0.32. Again, I've tilted, so now I've brought this you know, front end down. So I need to kind of start building that up. Okay. And um, then, all right, so my tilt's a little too high on the back. I don't need that much tilt. Let's bring it down a little bit. Let's go tilt, uh, let's go 6.6. .6. All I care is that I'm over the top. Let's turn this around so y'all can see. You all can see me. Y'all. All right. I'm hitting all kinds of southern tones tonight. Okay. So let's turn this around. Okay. So you can see my tilt. You know, I'm building up over. It's kind of uh, coming into here and stuff. And this is where clipping is going to come in in a little bit. I'm going to clip some of these parts away, possibly, uh, that I don't want. And, of course, I didn't want to do that. Don't drag your models around. Uh, let that... Settle out, and then we're going to go Control Z, put it back where it was. Control Z is an undo key. There we go. Um, so I'm coming over this area here into this frame, and that's fine. But this, uh, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be deciding if I want to kind of scale things down to be so I don't come over this lip right so everything kind of stops at this top lip and uh, but right now I'm just kind of getting the general uh, layout of the shape that I want so um, right now 0.6 is fine 6.6 uh, .6 is fine on that let's go let's go 6.5 just uh, or 6.4 let's see if that I want to make sure no part disappears right in this area 
Okay, still acceptable. All right, so we're gonna leave it at 6.4. Now, let's tilt this a little bit more here. When I say tilt, I mean the screen this time, not the actual model. Now I need to, you know, I had this model and now it's, you know, it's standing up. It's, it's proud of this model here. And I really didn't want that, right? Uh, I want to kind of uh, fade this away or clip it away, right? I got to have a choice. Am I going to fade it away or am I going to clip it away? If I clip it away, that means I'm removing part of the model. Uh, let's start with the fade first and see if it works the way we would like. If not, then we have to look at clipping, which we're going to get into. Once we get the corner done, then we're done. We're home free. The project's wrapping up and we're ready to go. So let's get this corner wrapped up here. Um, let's start with our fade. So I'm going to click here and on my set button and get my anchor. Now remember, the area that I uh, click on first is the area that I want to kind of keep. The area I click to second is what I want to fade. All right, so kind of in, I'm going to fade in this direction here, fade in this direction. So I want to click out here kind of first and then click kind of in here second. Okay. And by default, the fade is set to 50%. Okay. And now uh, you can see that I've faded that model away into the other one. Right? Can you see that? You see that? Okay. And then of course, you know, I could select my component uh, and I can of course absolutely uh, adjust my fading, uh, you know, depending on, you know, what I want. I could adjust it accordingly and stuff. All right. So let's like right flourish and I, you know I could adjust my percentage if I wanted to but 50% uh, does good it's kind of gotten rid of the things that I want to get rid of and that's fine so let's go ahead and uh, let's swing back around to full view and you can kind of see how look at this side not this side over here how things are starting to kind of come and blend together there all right now I like the way this looks, so I want to make sure that I delete the other one. Delete. <clears throat> and on uh, this component here, I'm going to select it. I'm going to select that line that I drew there, and I'm going to mirror that by flipping about that line. Okay. And in my 3D view, uh, when I mirror that part, I'm making a copy of it. So therefore, I am copying all of its elements, its tilt, its fade, its base height, all of that stuff. All right. And so there is, uh, you know, the corner of the frame. Now, would I want to go like, I mean, how, how, how much is too much kind of thing, right? Uh, do I want this floral pattern that I picked, uh, this flourish here? Uh, this flourish has two parts to it. It has a leaf part and a top. So if I turn off one part, um, you can see that we have a leaf part there, or you know, that's the leaf part. And if I turn off the other one, we have just the little topper, which is this part here, right? I have little two little components in this model. It's called a uh, an X model. So if any model that you see in your component tree, you know, your clip art, if it has a dash X, that means there are multiple models creating that, that piece and we can work with them, okay? Um, and so what I wanna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna see Hey, let's 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 see if we can uh, uh, implement it into here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the number nine key on my keyboard. The number nine key will turn my model 45 degrees counterclockwise, and then I'm going to grab it right kind of in the center bottom, and I'm going to drag it up and set it right here. 
it's oversized right now. We'll size it down in a minute. I'm going to change the component to a merge. Okay, and let's go back to the 2D view for this part. We're gonna size it down. When I double click on the object, I have the center box there and I want to make sure that center box is right snapped right on my line, right? So I'm centered on this part. And by the way, notice when you're not working on a model, how it's grayed out, but when you click on it, it's grayed, you know, it's, it's full kind of like grayscale. If you need to be able to see the model that you're kind of aligning to or working with and things like that, you can right click on it and go to that object's properties and you can turn the fading off so it, it uh, is always highlighted. Like on this model here, uh, when I'm not clicked on it, it's grayed out like that. But if I go to the object's properties, I can turn that fading off. Um, this one here, turn that fading off. And so no matter if I'm clicked on it or not, I can still see it, right? That kind of thing, if you wanted to. Uh, by default, uh, in the objects properties, uh, that fading is kind of like halfway, 50%. And so it's kind of faded out. Okay. Just wanted to share that with you in case you did not know, and it's a right click on the component. So if ever you had a, you know, a model and like you're trying to align something to it and all of a sudden you don't click on it, you know, and you're, and you're not clicked on it, it grays out. It's like, oh shoot, I can't see the detail I'm trying to align to then. And what I'm trying to do is on this model here, I'm trying to align right to the center of this little V. And so I basically want to kind of come down right about here and make sure I'm kind of centered. And, um, I'll size it up just a little bit. Oh, that was a shaky cam. Um, let me get back on my line here. Snapping, love snapping. All right. So if we go into our 3D view, Right now, that object is still in a kind of an add mode, right? It's taking on the shape that's underneath it. Uh, we want to um, make sure that all of our components are merged. And we're going to drag this down into that corner. So it will merge. You'll see it disappear and it's all green now because it's inside, right? So we're going to go into the properties of that and we're going to give it some base height. We're going to build that base height up some. Raising it up. And of course, because this model is tilted, the one underneath it is tilted, we're going to have to tilt the other one as well. Uh, but before I tilt it, I want to size it up. So let's size this up. And again, that might be overkill on that corner. We might not need all that, but I'm just showing you how we could build models. And we'll see what it looks like. If it doesn't look good, we can always turn it off. All right. All right, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to bring this almost right down into that V, not too much. Okay, let's go back to the 3D view and we'll look at where we're at here. And now we're going to do some tilting, right? To tilt the back side of this up. So there's my little blue square. When it, by the way, when it's red, that means that is the model that is selected. That is the particular component that's selected. Um, and when you see green 
on there, that means that part of that selected model is hidden or inside another model, right? So we know that part of my model is hidden by this model here because we need to kind of tilt it. We need to tilt, right? Like that little tilt move. All right, so I'm gonna click on this blue square once again to get my properties here. And on my tilt, I'm gonna hit my set button. And again, this is the thin part of the wedge down here. I need to put the thick part of the wedge up here to tilt that out. So I'm gonna click down here first. I'm gonna click up here at the top of the model at last. It always makes the screen jump when you uh, do that. Uh, and then I'm going to change the degree of angle. And I'm just gonna start tilting that up um, to where you know I'm satisfied with the way that it looks. What I'd like to do is I'd like to bring this size down here kind of a little bit under the these uh, pedals, if you will, a little bit under these pedals, kind of make it look a little bit more natural. So <laughs> on my base height, I'm going to lower the base height just a little bit. Uh, instead of uh, that big 0. 0.556, we're going to go 0. 0.3. Too many decimal points. Uh, so just 0. 0.3. We're gonna shove that or lower it back down into that merge, right? Okay. And I'm also going to, while I'm here real quick, I'm gonna kinda actually move into those pedals a bit, just like that. All right. And let's get back to where we were. Let's tilt this a little bit. So now basically part of that model is kind of hidden behind those pedals a little. And now I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's zoom, let's get into a position where everybody can see very well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more tilt. A little bit more tilt. Okay, a lot more tilt. little bit more oh we're so close a little bit more what I'm watching is these pedals up here uh, I'd like to get them kind of over a bit I don't have to get all of them right but I would like some uh, and everything uh, and everything so let's go another another degree let's go 14 and that should bring me, and it's hard to tell how they combine with the greens and reds, so I always click off the models so they kind of uh, turn their natural tan color and then I can really kind of look at it and see. I would like this a little bit more here, so I will click back on that. And let's go another degree. Where'd that go? Um, hold on, I lost the whole model completely on that one. There we go. Come on back to me. It was like, it was like, no, that's too much, and it went backwards. Okay, I'll click off this so I can see, and I'm okay with the way that's transitioning. Now, you know, I've got this bloom coming in here, right? Uh, let, let's call it like a flower blooming out of these petals and everything. What I'd like to do is I am going to move this down a little bit more to get into these petals here a little bit more. So my 2D view is kind of better for me to work with on that because I have my line. And so I'm going to pull that model down just a little bit more into here. Go back to the 3D view, and you can see that now it looks like it's coming out of that uh, a little bit better. And what I would like to do is I'm gonna just slightly 
fade the detail. I really don't need to fade the detail, but I'd like to kind of, the fading also kind of thins out the model. And I'd like to thin this out just a little bit under these pedals, these pedals of this model that's behind it. So if I select that and in the properties, I'm gonna go fade. Remember the area that we wanna keep, we click first. So let's hit our set button. I'll click up here first and then I don't have to be on the model. I could be way back here, right? Uh, you know, where, however far away I want to fade because it's going to fade from, you know, start to finish wherever I first click and second click. But I'm just going to go right to about here and do my second click and it's going to fade this. That was too much. 50% is way too much. You know, it fades it down. So we're going to reduce that fading a bit. Okay, and all I'm doing is just it's I'm slightly thinning this down so it blends a little bit better into this corner. Okay, so let's get kind of big screen so y'all can see it. Uh, all I'm doing, like for instance, watch here if I turn that fading up to let's say 19, it's going to start thinning the detail away here and kind of thinning it away. Um, and I, that's too much. I don't want to, you know, uh, bury it that much in there. So I'm just going to five degrees and all it's doing is a slight fade. Um, and I can live with that. went the wrong direction. Bear with me a second here. Okay. All right. So that is done. Uh, let's go ahead and close this tool and click here and click off the model to kind of select it. And let's get this kind of full on squared on view. And let's look at that model. All right. Some of you may think, God, that is God ugly. Some of you might like, oh, that looks pretty nice or whatever. I'm just, it's a lesson on building. Now, it doesn't look like anything right now uh, because we only have one corner done, right? So what we're going to do is um, we are going to now take our flourish component, our uh, little leaves, our side leaves, and our main flourish behind it, and um, the flourish here is, uh, you know, um, grouped into itself, so I don't need to have all of those, uh, you know, those other two extra things selected, so just these four main things, and I'm going to mirror, so in my mirror tool, I'm going to create a mirrored copy and flip it about my job center. Okay, flip it about my job center and I'm gonna flip it horizontally first, just one click. Give it a minute to build that model on the other side. Okay, so give it a moment. All right, now I'm going to since it, the new model is what's selected over here, I'm going to flip that vertically. Give it a minute. Don't be clicking, clicking, clicking. Let it build that model. It's got to build all those tilts and fades and everything into, it's got to match all those settings. There's number three. And then again, horizontally to go back over to this corner. And by the way, um, let it build that. Uh, those flourishes, those corner flourishes that I did, those are part of your Vetrix software, Desktop Pro and Aspire. Those are models in the decorative folder. You have those, those components. All right, so now we will close the mirror tool. And you will see, um, you know, in our frame here, this is what our decorative corner frame looks like. Okay, or what our, what our corner, what our frame looks like, period. Okay, cool. 
Now we need to kind of, uh, we got to organize. Now it's time to, we've done all the work. Now we've got to organize. So I'm going to move back over to the right side. Let's go to the right side because we're going to be working on the left. Uh, and um, over here in our component tree, we need to do some organization. Okay. So first things first, um, I've got corner one, two, three, and four. Corner one is my lower left corner, right? That's this one. So I'm going to find my four flourishes uh, that are for that corner left. So I'm going to select this one, and there it is right there. Uh, I'm going to select, yep, so it'll be that first one. There we go. So it'll be number three. Uh, on my flourishes here, uh, I'm going to go with, hold down that shift key, because we're now we're selecting more than one component. I'm going to go with flourish number three. Don't hold the shift key, hold the control key, ladies and gentlemen, the control key. So we're gonna select that and hold the control key. I'm gonna go down here and uh, number three, that's not it. Let's turn that off. Number five, that's not it. So it's gonna be, of course, number seven. There we go. Uh, turn off number five, number five doesn't well. So these two are selected. Uh, so I got those two. I need a couple more. Let's go with number eight. There we go. And then last but not least, number three. There we go. So that is all the components of that lower left corner. And so I want to take and I want to drag them. I'm holding down uh, my just my left mouse button and I'm dragging them down. I'm not holding the control key to that corner lower left level. So they're nice and organized in that level. And I could turn that level on and off as I want, you know, to hide those things if I needed to, that kind of thing, right? Now, the flourishes, all those things we built up, they're combining properly the way they're supposed to, but the level is not set correctly. So the level combined mode needs to be a merge so that it's these, things in there sit well with the others. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I got my lower left corner there that's taken care of. Now I need to select this model here, which is going to be my right, lower right corner. Uh, hold down my shift key. Let's grab this guy here. All right, don't hold the shift. I did it again, ladies and gentlemen. It's the control key. We're selecting the control key. So we want the control key. Let's grab this one. All right, wonderful. Uh, number six, that's that one, great. And number two, perfect. Those items are gonna go to my lower right. So we'll drag them up to the lower right corner. And again, when it drops in, you see how they, let's zoom in on that so you can really see what that is. Right, remember that uh, that add mode is like adding a draping a sheet over a car. It's taking on the shape that's underneath it, and everything. That's because that level is set to add. We need to change that levels mode to merge, so it sits on that level like it's supposed to. Okay, all right, and wonderful. All right, last but not least, uh, we need uh, to get my upper right corner in its proper spot. Uh, I'm holding that control key down. Okay, and that is gonna be my upper right, so I'll drag those into that upper right level. All right. Wonderful. Now, if we've done everything, uh, and again, that upper right level combined mode needs to be changed to merge. Okay. Now, I have my four corners. So I could turn off corner number four, my lower right. I could turn off corner number three, my upper right. I could turn off corner number two. I could turn off corner number one, and of course, I could turn off my main frame, right? I have control of all those different levels and things, okay? And what that allows me to do, it allows me to clip 
I can now assign clipping to certain levels depending on what I want to keep and what I want to remove. All right, once again, uh, once we've gotten this far, let's get all the corners turned back on. And I'm gonna go back to my drawing tabs. I'm gonna hit my little save button. I could go to file save as well, but I'm just gonna hit my little save button. It's both the same, just to save the changes up to this point. Okay. All right, let's take at this point because we're now ready to do a little bit of clipping. Let's take a moment and answer a couple of questions. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Jeff says, good evening, Laney and everyone. That is a good question. I am trying to get the blue background screen to also move over to my new monitor. When I move my screen over, the background screen turns a light green or gray, to, but I think he meant light green. Um, If it's, let's say it's a blue background, right? And you have two monitors, uh, Jeff, if you, if you pull that program over to your other screen and the background is now kind of a light green, then that's going to be your color settings on that actual screen. Okay. So you need to calibrate. If you have a dual screen going on, you need to calibrate your screen. So, uh, they color coordinate exact. Uh, in, or, you know, change it to a color that's not so distracting, like black or something, or white, even. But uh, uh, you need to color calibrate, if that's, if that, if I was reading that correctly. Okay, um, uh, Camaro, thanks, Stephen. Uh, it's worth watching. You learn something every time. I think you were talking about, uh, like, fading a component when I was talking about fading a component. I think that's what you're referring to. That was when that comment was posted, so thanks. I appreciate that. All right, so now we have our model. Let's get, let me get back over to uh, the left side. No, actually, I'm sorry, we're working in our component tree, so I gotta stay over here. Let me just drag this model over to the left of the screen. And uh, just because we're working on this left side and I'll be on the right. Am I on the right? I'm on the right, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so now, what I want to do is in my 2D view, I want to draw some vectors uh, that will allow me to um, clip away certain parts of this frame. Now this frame was designed on a, as a 24 by 24 inch square frame. Okay, but I may, you know, want to narrow this down and make it longer and narrower and things like that. So what I'd like to do is I would like to clip a corner component out of this and export that model. And then I'd also like to clip a kind of a, a straight region and uh, clip that model. Now what I'm about to do here as far as uh, the clipping, using the clipping and to clip away parts of a model, anyone can do. Desktop Pro Aspire, okay? But when it comes to saving those model components, unfortunately, that is a spy, an Aspire feature. Uh, you can just save your program and stuff um, uh, if, uh, if, if need be. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to have the ability to export out as a 3D model Okay, for, for those desktop and pro users. So bear with me. You guys have been doing well by hanging in, but hang in with me so you can see what's going on. All right, so what I'm gonna do is in my drawing tools, I'm just gonna draw a simple rectangle. So uh, on here, I would like to draw a rectangle that is kind of my, a, uh, you know, kind of a straight area, right? And I'd also like to draw a rectangle for a corner. Okay, now on the corner, I wanna make sure that the corner is um, the same length, you know, from the end of my model there to the edge of my rectangle, I want to make sure that I have the same spacing here that I do over here. So in this case, now I could be, I could literally draw a wiggly line around this. I could draw anything that I want. Like I'm clipping away whatever shape it is. I could draw a heart and I'd be clipping away a heart. 
whatever's inside of this vector that I'm drawing is what I want to keep. Anything outside this vector I want to not keep. I want to clip it away. It's not going anywhere. It's just not going to be visible in my model, right? So to ensure that I have the same distance from here to here, um, I could use guidelines or I could just make sure that my rectangle is the same size. So we're going to go uh, 10 by 10 on that uh, rectangle. And then I'm going to close out of that rectangle tool and come here, come here. And if I have my line, of course, I should have done this all on the right side. Uh, my line right here, I'm going to mirror that over to the other side. So mirror, I'm going to flip it horizontally boop, like that so that I have that here. Okay. Now, if I were to size this line, okay, and on my rectangle here, if I center this rectangle or snap that rectangle to my line, snap over to the line. All right, to make sure that that is perfectly aligned there, okay, in this direction and everything. Now, um, my spacing should be the same. Let's find out. Uh, let's take a guideline. Let's make sure if I'm instructing you guys and girls correctly, if I move this guideline and snap, or not snap, but get close to the edge of this model right here, okay? And I take a guideline down here, and let's zoom into that and get close to this model. This is not an exact science, but we'll get close enough. Um, if I measured vertically, don't fail me now, from this guideline to this line here, it's about a quarter of an inch, 0 0.20567. You might not be able to read that, but it says 0 0.25067. All right. Um, and here, let's, uh, let's do it out here. All right. 25067. All right. Let's come over here and let's measure vertically or horizontally this time from here to here. 0.24567. So close to 524. So I'm almost there. I'm off a little bit. Uh, no worries. We will adjust this slightly. I'm at 2567 here. I'm going to keep this height. So all I'm going to do is shift left to right. I was at 24 and some change there. So I'm just going to bump that over. Uh, actually, I'm going to be very specific how I bump it over. I'm going to move it. And what was my measurement? Daggummit, I done forgot it. Hold on a second. Let's go back in here and let's measure that again from here to here. My number was two, four, five, six, seven, right? All right, so if I move this rectangle, okay, relative to its current position on my x-axis, left and right, I'm gonna go to the left, so that's a negative number. Uh, and what I wanna do is I want to move 0.25067 minus, so let me type that in, 0 0.25067 minus 0.24567 equals, that's five thousandths of an inch I was off. Man, I was close, right? Uh, that needs to be a negative number. <clears throat> I'm going to hit that negative sign. I'm going to click apply to bump that over a little bit. Wonderful. And now if I were to measure horizontally from my guideline to here, I should be at 25067. And now I'm perfectly aligned. Great. Right? Right. Okay. Now in this rectangle here, um, 
let's get rid of that measurement and this measurement. We don't need those measurements in there anymore. All right. Uh, this little rectangle here, I'm just going to size it so it's kind of bumped with this edge right here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just going to size it there. All right, cool. Okay, so my first clipping job, my first clipping job, uh, I want to select this rectangular vector here. And this is my upper right corner. So in my upper right corner, which is the one that's highlighted here, uh, I want to right click on that level. Clipping apply. Okay. On my frame, my main frame, I also want to right click clipping apply. On both of those, on the frame and that corner component. Now, my lower left corner, I will turn off. My upper left corner, I will turn off. And my lower right corner, I will turn off. I don't need those on right now. I just need my main frame and my upper right corner on. And if I look at my 3D view, I have now created a corner component here, okay? So I have my corner component. Now this is up to this point. This is where the uh, Aspire feature uh, kicks in. I need, I want to go to my modeling, export as an STL, and I want to triangulate that corner component. So it means it's going to build all those little polygons and all that triangulation. Okay, so there's the model that it just created. Now I want to save that triangulation. Now where I save this is important. I'm going to save this on my PC, C drive, users, public, public documents, Vectric files. Okay. And in my clip art library, I'm going to create a new folder called custom models or I could call it corner frames if I want to kind of break up the category like that or whatever, but I'm just going to do custom models. And uh, in that folder is where I'm going to save this. And this is going to be my uh, deco corner 01. We'll start a little naming convention there and I'm going to save that. Now I have the choice of saving it as a POV file, OBJ, STL you know, that third party model file, or let's go back for a minute. I can also export as 3D clip art. Okay. If I was sending this model to someone else to use, then I would export it out as an STL, a third party model file that they can import into their software. Um, if I create a 3D clip art, that's going to be a dot 3D clip going to be an Aspire model and I'm only able to use it in Aspire. So if I exported that out as a 3D clip art, the 3D clip art, this dot 3D clip is an Aspire model that only can be opened in Aspire, right? And it might be a model that I want to share or something like that. Uh, so, but it's your choice, whichever one you want to do. If it's going to be something you're just using for yourself, it's going to go into your folder, then, you know, save it that way. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this triangulation and it's going to automatically, uh, by default be an STL. And, um, in my, and we'll do it both ways. Um, just to show you what the difference is. One we have to import, the other we drag and drop kind of deal. So I'll show you. Uh, let's go to this PC, C drive, users, public, public documents, vetric files, clip art, and custom models. And I'm going to save this again, uh, deco corner 01. And I'll save that. Okay. Now, I want to close that triangulation, okay? 
So I only need to triangulate it when I am, I only need to triangulate it when I am uh, saving it as an STL or an OBJ type file. If I'm saving it as a clip art, don't need to do my triangulation. All I have to do is go up to model, export as 3D clip art. When I do that, uh, I can then go into my folder. And again, I'm in my C drive, users, public, public documents, Fetric files, clip art, custom models folder there. Uh, I'm going to call this um, Deco Frame Class 1. That's fine. And save it because it's a different file format. Now let's go into our clip art library. Okay. And if I click on the word clip art over here, I will see Deco or custom models now show up. And there's my corner. Well, this is the clip art file, the 3D clip. The STL doesn't show up because that file has to be imported in. I can import it in, but I can't have it in my clip art here. So, but I can drag and drop this in as a clip art file. So you guys and girls that are saving these for yourself in this folder that I can now choose from my clip art library and all, um, save it as three export it as 3d clip art so it'll show up in there if it's something that you're saving uh for the um uh send to someone you know or sell to someone or whatever the case may be then stl or obj but i like stl now notice that here in the deco frame the clip art that it brought in when I dragged it in it didn't bring in just the corner it brought in that corner and the rest of the frame right it brought in the whole thing um, in our modeling tools if we look at what we just brought in here okay uh, it brought in the uh, component which is the frame All right, which is uh, hiding here. And it brought in the, where, where'd it go? Where'd you go? Right here, mainframe. So it brought in, when I say it as a clip art, it brought in the whole thing, all four corners. They just happen to be turned off. So I brought in the whole model, not just that corner. Crazy, right? All right, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I wanted to just bring in that component. Okay. So let's undo that. Edit, undo, import component. Right. Let's go back here in my 3D clip art. This is all I want. Right. So in Aspire, I have the ability to go to model, create, component from I can create a component from the baked components from the visible model that's what I'm going to choose there from the draft of the visible model from an offset model from a sliced model I can create a component and in this case it's my visible model what can be seen here that's what I want to create a component from okay that's what I want to create a component from so I want to create that component Okay, and you'll see down here on the left hand side, let's get this back on the screen. On the left hand side, it says copy of visible component. That's what it created. Okay, if I let's create a new level and drag that up there. Now, if I turn off my main frame, okay, I turn off. Uh, my corner level three then all I have now is my copy of this model that I've created right this visible model it is actually it's its own model 
right? It's not all of these. Now on this model here, this selected model, I'm going to export it out as 3D clip art. Better work this time. If it doesn't, I'm going to be like, Ugh. no, I'm just kidding. It should work now. Give it a second. I'm going to call this my deco corner frame and I'm going to replace the existing one. Very cool. All right. Give it a second. Okay. We'll turn that off for a second. I'm going to create just another level just so you guys can see what I import in. So we'll just call it level two. Let's go back to our um, clip art layer. Let's refresh. I'm going to click on clip art and then custom models here. And now I should be able to drag and drop this in and it should be just the corner. It should be just the corner. It doesn't act like it's going to be just the corner. It looks like it's trying to build them all again. Let's find out. It's just the corner. Yay! We did good. Okay. All right. It was it was tricking me there. Uh, so what I needed to do was under model, I needed to create that component from that what they're seeing visibly, and then save just that component as a 3D clip art. So now I can, I have it in my library that I can drag and drop and use it. Okay. So. So we didn't get confused there one more time. There are lots of ways that we can export a project or a model out. We can export it out as an STL. We can export it out as 3D clip art. We can export it out as a grayscale image for some reason, you know, a grayscale image. Um, I don't know how useful that would be as far as model component, but it, there's a reason and purpose for it. But we can create a component on what we see on the screen where that can be its own model. We can create that component. And once we do, then we can export that part out as its own model. Okay. So let's do it again. But this time let's go ahead and delete this level. after we delete this corner frame. Bear with me. It's going to be temperamental now. All right, we're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got to make our one other part <coughs> and then we'll be good to go. All right, so let's select that corner frame. Excuse me for a minute. Red Solo Cup. All right, so I'm going to right click and delete that particular model. Um, I'm going to delete that level. I'm kind of cleaning up my mess here. Go down here to level one and uh, I'm going to delete that model and that level one. I don't have to worry about it. It's still in my clip art, right? I saved it already in my clip art gallery here under my custom models. All right, now let's go back to my main frame. On my main frame component, you can see without the corner turned on, the corners turned off. All I see is just the frame corner, right? So I could just do that, but I don't want that. I want to uh, remove the clipping. Okay, so I see the whole frame. And now on this rectangle, this is going to be my clipping vector. I, on just on that main frame, I'm going to apply the clipping. Okay. Now if we go look at our 3D view, now I just have a clipping of one of the straight regions, right? Cool. Let's answer a question real quick. Um, Troy uh, says, can you add folders to another folder like a tree? Uh, when saving those files such as custom folder, 
then put a folder in that folder called corners. Yeah, you could, you could, um, you could, uh, but we want the uh, items to be in that folder so they show up like a grid, like here's all of our animals, right? Uh, and all of our borders and things like that. So in our custom models, you know, we build up a grid or custom images. We build up, a, you know, a grid, whatever the case may be. Uh, I don't know about if it, how it does in a folder there, um, but we'll find out. Now, adding a folder, this adds a folder to, um, like, if there's a certain place on my computer that I have folders and all that with files in them, I can add them to this library right here. That's not that's not what the add folder means that you're thinking of, Troy. Okay, um, I can add a remove folder, but in the um, when we go into our file explorer and we go to the C drive, program files, not C program files, Lainey, uh, users, public public documents, Vetric files. In our clip art here, um, we can absolutely add new folders. And if I do a folder, let's do one inside of custom models here. Uh, let's do uh, a new folder inside there and we'll call this corners, okay? And I'm just gonna drag my 3D clip art file into that folder, okay? My STL, I don't really need it in there. I'm going to actually drag that up to my uh, downloads. I'll move it over there because it can't show up here anyway. Um, and I want to use that for something else, export it out. But let's now refresh our folder here, our custom model folder. And um, it's still showing up even though that folder is inside of another folder. It's still showing up. It doesn't. It cut. It doesn't really break it down into. Um, it doesn't really break it down into like corners, or this or that. There's no little subcategory. Okay. All right. Really quickly, uh, let's get on to what we were doing here. So this component right here, this frame, we're going to go into model, create a component from the visible model. Okay. And that copy of that visible model, that's the only thing that we're going to, we're going to create a new level here, insert a new level. We're going to call that level one and we're going to drag that copy up there. I'm going to go in and turn off my main frame. So all I see is just this and I'm going to export as 3D clip art. Let that open up. And um, I'm just gonna throw it in custom models here. We're gonna call this uh, deco frame. Uh, this is gonna be uh, deco frame one straight now I want to clean up my file names really quickly I'm going to go into my users C drive users public public documents vetric files clip art custom models uh, I want to in this corners here I'm going to drag this back to custom models I'm gonna get rid of that folder because it's useless uh, to me. All right, this is the straight and this deco frame. Let's rename this. We're gonna get rid of the word class. Deco frame one and it's gonna be the corner. Okay, all right, great. So I got my straight piece and my corner piece for that deco frame one. All right, let's go over and uh, file save our changes, not save as, but save. We're just updating our changes and everything. And we've created our two components, all that wonderful stuff. We've added it to the library. Now, again, the exporting of a model out 
creating a model from a visible component, those things are only available in Aspire. Uh, so for you guys and girls that don't have Aspire and you've kind of uh, you know built your own frame or whatever the case may be uh, to the best of your ability, uh, you could save just that project file. So you would actually size the frame to the frame you need. Okay. Now let's go ahead and close out of this project real quick. And I want to create a new file. I'm going to hold my shift key down. Um, and uh, I'm going to kind of go in an extremely high resolution again. This time I want my frame uh, to be, I want my frame to be, uh, let's say, 16 by 10. Let me see what that looks like. Yeah, 16 by 10, that'll be good. Okay, I'm gonna click OK. All right, in my models, uh, my clip art, I've got my straightaway in my corner. I'm gonna drag in a corner here. And I'm going to drag in a straight piece here. Okay. Then I need, of course, uh, you know, they're big, right? Because they were built on a 24 by 24. I'm going to size it appropriately. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and scale down appropriately. And let's get that into uh, position. Let's get it on that corner of that board. We'll get it centered on that corner in just a minute, but let's uh, size it down appropriately here. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I wanna snap to that corner there. Okay, and uh, it looks like I snapped a little high, so let's take and bump that down. Okay, there we go. Cool beans. Let's make sure that I'm, oh, I'm all, I snapped in the wrong place altogether. So let's bump this over. I'm using the left arrow key to bump it over. Okay. All right, so I've got my corner here. Now I'm going to uh, come in and uh, mirror that corner so let's go to the mirror tool and i want to create a mirror copy flipping in my job center i'm going to flip it horizontally give it a second give it a second it will happen all right i'm gonna flip it vertically patient and then I'm going to flip it horizontally okay now right here these two edges are overlapping let's look at this in the 3d view and first of all, currently right now they're added, they're not merging, they're not blending with each other, right? So in our component tree, okay, we have our components there, those four components and stuff. Um, in our component tree, we need to make sure that everything is playing nice with one another. Uh, so on our tree frame corner here, we need to change that to merge. Okay, and um, let's turn that off for a second. Not turn it off, Lanny, don't. Why are you turning it off there, buddy? Okay. Um, okay, corner number two, merge.
I'm clicking these little minus signs over here just to close up some of these windows. Uh, corner number one, merge, combine mode, merge. I want these merging together. Okay, and then uh, let's click on these. I'm clicking on these minus signs to close up these windows. Uh, this one here, merge. Okay, so uh, let's click on these minus signs, close those up. Oops, I turned off the visibility of the corner. Turn it back on. All right. Okay, so now uh, I've got in here, because of the size and everything, I could size it down even smaller, right? So that they don't blend together if I didn't want them to merge like this, right? That might look, you know, uh, unsightly, which it does right now on that edge. You know, the way those two parts come together, they look quite unsightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my sizing for each of these. So let's look at our size tool and uh, let's go keep the aspect ratio. We're gonna keep our aspect ratio. And uh, instead of 5.47, I'm just gonna go 5.375 and probably five and a quarter. I don't know why I'm being so stingy with it, but uh, Apply. Yeah, let's go five and a quarter. And apply. Keep that last aspect, aspect ratio locked. All right, once again, let's get that uh, corner back in there. Let's see if I can snap this time to the right place. I still over snapped. Um, that's okay. We'll get this in a minute. Uh, five and a quarter so we're gonna just go through and five and a quarter change all these uh, sizes just gonna do these first two first um, all right now I'm gonna be very picky about how everything lines up so I'm gonna grab this is it gonna let me grab that corner no All right, I'm using my up arrow key and let's bump, 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 bump. Oh gosh, that's micro movements. Come on now. Can't be having that. So I'm just gonna drag. Boy, that's a slow process. Hold on a second. Let me zoom out here. All right. Okay. I want to be specific. I want to be on my line. That's, I mean, I got my design there for a reason. Over here, same thing. Okay. Uh, so I want to be on the line. That was a little overshot. So I'm gonna hit my back arrow key a couple of times and get on there. All right, cool. On this one here, this model here, I'm still overlapping on that five and a quarter, but it's a little bit more natural. Um, on the way they come together. So I'm not too bad about that, but I do want to get my alignment right, right? My alignment looks off. Uh, so let's get that, uh, let's get that fixed. All right. So I'm gonna take this model. I'm gonna select this, oops. I'm gonna select this model first, this model last. And I'm going to align side to side to get that into alignment like that. 
Use your alignment tool. All right, cool beans. All right, and let's look at that in the 3D view one more time. Much better. I'm happy with that. I can be fine with that. All right, let's get our um, our other corner here. It's got to be sized to five and a quarter and five and a quarter for both of those. So let's um, this corner component five and a quarter. We're not gonna play around with. Uh, let's get it sized. We gotta hurry up. Yep. And five and a quarter for this one as well. And of course, I could scale this down to whatever size frame that I needed to be. Um, okay. So now let's uh, in our two D view. Let's get this lined up. wanting to um, snap the outer part of the model over the line I don't like that uh, let's use our down arrow key real quick get that there perfect that one's good all right let's take this one and let's get this down here in position I'm at least gonna get it down here in position One more, one more. You can do it. Oh, overshot it. Let's zoom in and use the up arrow key. The, uh, the closer you are when you're zoomed in, the more of a movement it makes. The farther away, it's more, you know, it, it adjusts the movement accordingly based on your arrow keys. Now, I'm going to select this model. This is what I want to align. I'm going to select this model last. That's what I want to align to. And I'm going to use my alignment tool and align left to right. Pull that into order. Okay. Cool. All right. Now my thin piece here, right? My, my, my straight piece. I need to put a straight piece here and here. Okay. So I'm just going to work on the top. And let's get it sized down to uh, position. So I'm going to snap that to there and let's not really snap to it, but let's pretend <laughs> and uh, I'm going to size that down. Okay. Now my Model Z, let's go down long way. So we're looking at this um, along the X, along the X. Let's tilt this up. Ah. I had to undo that move. I drag, grab that model and drag it a little bit. All right, let's tilt this up. There we go. Okay, first things first, on my straight piece, I need to merge. So it's gotta be set to merge. Okay, I need it to merge with the other component. All right, and let's, uh, let's kind of uh, zoom into this. And I need to get my size, my size appropriately sized. So, um, on here, I'm going to keep my aspect ratio and I'm going to size it down until my two parts are sized appropriately. And I'm going to make sure that I'm aligned appropriately. So um, I'm gonna take and select this model first, this model second. No, I'm not gonna do that, I can't do that because uh, it's a corner. I've gotta just move it. So let's... Uh, Bump that down a couple of bumps. Okay. And then I'm going to move it to the left. Uh, I should be able to just drag it to the left. Holy. My snap tool does not want to work with this model very well. 
That's why I should create outlines for it, but we'll deal with that another day. Um, let me get this into position. Now I've created a bit of an overlap where the two parts are overlapping here a little bit and that's fine um but the king the thing that's key for me is that uh, these two parts uh line up okay and like i said this is the closer you're zoomed in uh the further away you're zoomed in and things like this is how much it'll move i can't use my alignment tool up and down uh, unless I um, let me just get this a little bit more this is where it gets just a little bit fidgety there's a better way of doing it I could uh, draw some vectors and align things up okay let me show you a different way of aligning this than, than playing around with it like I'm doing here. Uh, on here, I could come in and draw a line. Okay. I could snap a line. Uh, you know, I could measure. Right here, let's do this. From the top of this piece to the bottom of this model. Okay, space bar to finish. I now have a line. This line has a center point right here. So I could snap to the center here. And on the center, let me make sure I'm snapped to the center. I could draw a line this direction as well. Okay, now I basically kind of created a, uh, you know, a component. Uh, but now I want to also create a line on this component. So I want to snap to the top of this component to the bottom of this component straight down. There we go. Space bar to finish. Oh, I didn't quite hit the bottom. Hold on a second. Okay. And on this line that I drew, I can drag it and snap it to the center of this line. And, you know, depending on how far I'm off, let's say, for instance, uh, let's grab these two items here and let's move. I'm just going to hit a big bump. Um, Control Z to undo that. I'm going to select these three things. I'm just going to bump them up out of alignment. Well, now I can take those guys and I could kind of select them uh, the way they are and then I could select this line which is my center line last and I could align up or down pulling them into alignment do you know what I mean so I could have instead of playing around I could have just drawn some vectors and I could have aligned everything um, now my model is still big right this part is still oversized it's not sized appropriately yet if we look at the 3D view, we can tell that, let's zoom in. We can tell that by that little hook that's right there. Can you guys and girls see that? Oh, let me get myself back on the left side here. Why don't y'all tell me my head's in the way? Okay, that little hook right there. So now I'm gonna size my part up so this line that I drew here this line right here uh, that is the size of uh, this part roughly and the height of that line if I measure the height of that line uh, it's 1.525 so on this component here I'm going to change this to 1.5 1.525 and click apply This line here, I'm going to size that to 1.525, apply, okay? 
this line, I'm going to select that line right there first, this line second, and I'm going to align it up and down. So it's aligned with my model. I'm going to take this here with this model and align up and down to get it centered. And now these two items right here, this line and this line, even this one, I can align it with this line here up and down to get the size of how it needs to be. And then let's move in Move these out of the way and this. Now, this line up here, when you're close up, it looks like a white line there. It's a little tricky and everything. 3D view. Okay, we want to be in the 3D view. We want to look at our line here. And this will tell us where our misalignment is and stuff. Okay, so the 3D view is going to tell us everything we need to know. So on here, or here, either one, uh, let's split the view. This will only take a second, guys. Once we get it lined up, then we can stretch it out and all that wonderful stuff. Let's zoom in here. And on this model here, if I select that first, and I'll just use the up arrow key. See, the up arrow key jumps quite a bit, and that's almost too far. But I'm going to actually size it to there. Oh, just almost, brother. What is, what is up with you? All right. Sizing this guy right here, if I snap to that line, you better snap into place. There we go. Um, basically taking this size here and moving it and then touching over here where I want to align it to, snapping it into place. All right, so now when we click off of that model, we should have a seamless blend. I can see a little bit right here. I don't know if you guys and girls can see that. I can see a seam right there. Okay, so I'm going to take this, grab this size here, and you know size it up or down this way, and I'm gonna snap right along the top of my model there. What? I didn't snap to there, goofball. I snapped to here. Why are you doing that to me now? You're making me look bad in front of class, Aspire. Come on now. All right. I'm getting a new... I don't know what's, what snapping point is showing up, but let me zoom in. Bear with me a second. Let me zoom in a little bit. Get back into this view over here for a second. Oh, you're arguing with me today. You are arguing with me today. Okay, that was fidgety. All right, if I click off into uh, deselect the model, when I zoom in, I should have a seamless, I can still see a bit of a seam there. Uh, so we'll fine tune that in a minute. You guys get the idea? Lord have mercy. Uh, we'll go over and fix that in a second, but now I'm gonna stretch this out to this side. OK, 
Okay. Let me make sure my what my seam looks like. Bear with me. We're here. You can tell when we get to that third hour, things start screwing up. All right, my height. Where my seam issue is. All right, on my height, this part of the model here in the 3D view. is look at me straight on all right two nine eight zero and this is three 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 four two nine oh is it gonna vary on me like a pain in the ass you're supposed to be a flat region. Flat region. Let's go to a flat region here. One four eight six one six nine two. That's gonna vary too. One four. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Point seven five oh one. That is not correct. All right, give me a second. We've got a, we've got a pain in the butt here. I don't know why it's uh, it's it's acting up on me today. All right, I'm gonna go into my properties of that frame piece and my shape height. Is point three four eight nine. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. 0.3489. Okay. The part here at my highest peak, 3489, uh, would be kind of at the highest peak here. And so we're at 3060. Let me, let me start to bring this down. Three four hundred. Bear with me a moment. We started with a three quarter inch stick of material. Um, now, yes, but the, this is the inner frame piece. It's not the, you know, we have those corner flourishes that are higher than that. So, um, we, uh, you know, we're kind of playing around here now, uh, not playing around, but, um, oh, it is like so close. Let me get to this. Three zero three six. Let me find my heart. Three zero four two. Three zero four five. Three zero four five. All right, on this part here, this deco frame, 
Three zero four five. That's what I want to shoot for. I could sand that out, but I don't want to. Uh, three zero four five. Three zero four five. Point three zero four five. Give it a second to rebuild. Okay, let's click off of it. All right. Now, the only thing that... Uh, let me get to my high spot here. 3046. Okay, I can deal with that. All right, I still see the line, the joint there, uh, and it's a matter of it needs to bump over a little bit is what it is. Um, it needs to bump over here, but I don't know if I can get it to bump without dealing with all that. Uh, maybe if I zoom in really tight, really, really tight on this component. Maybe if it will let me select it. Come on now. We got things to do, guys. Uh, deco frame. All right, let me select that frame part. And if I bump it, if I zoom in nice and tight and I bump it a little bit, I'm using the up arrow key. A little bit more. A little bit more I'm gonna call that good on that side let's look at our 3d view okay I'm gonna call that good all right uh, yep I'm gonna call that good all right, so now that I have this thing sized, holy camoly, uh, appropriately and all that, I'm just going to take it and mirror it to the other side. I'm going to flip it vertically. <clears throat> Give it a second to build that component. Lord have mercy. We're at three hours and two minutes. Uh, three hours is too long. But hopefully you're learning a few things. All right, cool. And uh, on this one here, uh, this is perfectly aligned to the center and all that stuff. What I am going to do is um, I'm leaving this bad boy right where it is because uh, it's my corners that are off. They're off the board a little bit on these uh, two bottom corners. You know, so um, what I'm going to do is, let's look at this. I'm just going to bump it down a little because I'm a pain in the ass. And I'm looking at the light. Um... Shaded gray. I'm going to zoom in a little tighter so it'll be a micro movement. There we go. All right. Let's see if I, I went to the shade of gray instead of the black. That should be exactly what it needs to be. Uh, let's look in here. Let's click off into uh, close this tool. Click off into white space. Let's look at that frame on this side. Okay, I overshot it a small amount. So uh, really quick, gosh, almighty, that small amount right there. Um, 
I'm going to uh, actually just bump it back up. Okay, that's going to be enough. I don't know what this gray is, but uh, let me just look at the 3D view real quick. And then we're wrapping it up. Okay, that looks good on this end. This end is uh, another question. Let's go over here real quick and find out what's going on with that end. Over here. And... Alright, and I'm not going to move the centerpiece. I'm going to move the corner. The corner. So on the corner here, I'm going to move it down. And... You can only move, you know, it has to rebuild that model when you move once. You know, I have to rebuild that model. And I could drag it with my mouse, but then I risk over dragging it, right? And this is a, you know, it's like, holy cow, it took an hour just to line these four pieces. Why would I want to do this? Blah, blah, blah. It's not uh, that bad. It's just, uh, it's just sometimes it gets fidgety. In this case, it's fidgety. All right. I'm going to look at the 3D view. Let's come over here. And what I'm looking at is that seam. I've got a little bit more that I've got to move. Just a little bit. And I'm going to go about the middle of that white band there, just like the other side was. Right about there. Go into the 3D view, click off so I can see it blend together. Let me see, it's got a little bit, little bit more, a little bit more. Um, all right, that's going to be good. Click off so we can see it in its tan state. Okay, just a little bit more. And that's it. That's um, all I'm fooling around with it for right now. Okay. And that will be. Good, let's get this uh, turned around into there. And so now we have our, it took forever to get to this point, but now we have a rectangular frame, right? Uh, so we, we have the corner piece and that long piece that we can kind of blend, mix and match uh, to create different size frames. We can scale these parts down. When it comes to scaling, we gotta do our alignment to get everything aligned up um, and all of that, but you guys get it. So. All right, let's go ahead and um, uh, let's see here. I pinned uh, clip art to my quick access, save a lot of steps. There you go. Yep, Tippy Looter uh, saved his clip art to his quick access folder. So it saves a lot of those steps that file, C drive, program files, you know, or users, sorry, users, uh, Vetric, Vetric, you know, or public, public documents, Vetric files, and all that. You can just, you can paste that folder somewhere else uh, closer so there's less steps. Um, awesome lady, thanks a million, da da da. Okay, I know that, but it's uh, money that flow at the moment. All right, um, awesome. All right, so this is making a decorative frame and making com frame components and all uh, and things. Um, of course, working with levels uh, and separating those levels. Now in here, every one of those components by saving it as a component, a 3D clip art, it saved all the levels before, right? So it saved all the levels. Well, when, um, if I minimize these levels, these little plus signs here, you'll see how many levels we have and what was created, okay? Uh, so on our straight piece, Okay, our straight piece here, we have not only the straight piece, but it saved corner left, right, you know, level one, the main frame, 
it saved all of those things that we had in our previous folder file. The corner frame, again, it saved all four, all four corners, all four corners. Every time, you know, we created that corner frame. So just by saving it as a, a clip art, you know, by this part here, even though all we see is this part and that's what we're bringing in, uh, it's bringing in the whole, all the levels that we created in the original design. Um, when we, you know, save it as an STL model, uh, you know, and just save it on our computer, if we import it as an STL model, then we can import it in. The other thing about STL models is in Aspire, we can bring in multiple STL models, but in Desktop or Pro, we can only bring in one, one third party model file per project. In this case, we have two, right? Um, so for you guys and girls that have desktop and pro, a lot of this lighter stuff, later stuff won't apply. Clipping, uh, working with your levels and separating those uh, and everything, that'll all apply to you. Building your models and how they combine, merge, add, subtract, you know, how they combine with one another, that'll apply to you. Um, but the exporting of a model, that won't apply. That's an Aspire feature. Uh, the saving of a component or model that won't apply to you saving in that folder so we can import it in uh, that wouldn't apply to you um, and stuff like that uh, now you could save your project file to that folder absolutely could do that uh, and um, then you could bring that project file into something and you could do clipping your level clipping to clip what you want out of it and all but you're not really going to be able to Kind of manipulated around so there are some limitations for desktop and pro guys and girls that were watching but i want i hope you picked up something through this three hour course all right until next time guys and girls hopefully this was something uh you know interesting to you or at least kind of give you some ideas on how to make uh some you know elegant uh you know frames you know for portraits or whatever the case may be for people uh, and um, just gives you a general idea of the things that you can do. Tilting, fading, adding, subtracting, merging, you know, taking all of our models. We have, in, in Vetric VCarve Desktop, you guys have about 375 different models in ClipArt. It's about $1,500 of worth of models that came with your software initially. Uh, Pro, about $2,000 worth of models that came with your software initially. About 475 different models in ClipArt. Aspire, it's about $5,000 worth of models that came with your software, which is about 1,500 different models in ClipArt, right? You have all these models in ClipArt, and instead of just using one at a time to do this or that, this is kind of a way to show you how you can blend or combine these models to create new models, right? All right, everybody. Long night. Get some rest. Thanks for hanging out with me. Until next week. I'm signing out. See you soon. Goodbye. Uh, and Rodney, before I sign off to answer the question, would you cut this with one piece of wood? Yes. Okay. I would. This would be one piece of wood. Uh, it's uh, it's designed to. I would glue up my panel, whatever the size it was, and I would literally car carve this out of one piece of wood. I would have an inside vector in here uh, to cut out that opening. So in my model here, uh, on the model, if I select all of my parts, right? Select all my corners and everything. In all three software, you can do this. We're gonna create a boundary around it, create a vector boundary, okay? And uh, that will draw our um, inner and outer vectors. Hold on a second. Delete those. Don't you argue with me when I talk. You are right. There we go. Click. Did I just find a glitch? I 
think I just found a glitch. Okay, one corner at a time. Bear with me a second here. Trace that boundary. Interesting. Bear with me a second, guys and girls. We just found a quick glitch. Hold on. Um, create a vector boundary around the selected component. Interesting. Interesting. It's creating these little rectangles here. But it's not creating the boundaries. Let's try this one. Um, I'm going to turn off the other levels for a second. I'm going to turn off this, 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 this. We're going to say goodbye. We found a glitch real quick. I was going to show you. Anyway, we got to create that vectors for that pocket cut or that profile cut to cut that part out. But why? Oh, why? All right, this component right here. Create a vector boundary around that selected component. Okay. And it created the two corner options. All right. Let's go and see if clipping is turned on on that level. Where is that level at? Interesting. Uh, under level one, let's see clipping, remove. If I remove that clipping and I create a boundary around it, it's only creating on the ends. All right. So I'm gonna have to, uh, I'll have to address that with Vetric and find out exactly what the deal is uh, because I can't sit here and I'm not gonna guesstimate for a half hour, but why it's not creating that vector boundary. So I'll find out for that. I'll let you know next week when we uh, talk about next week's class, we'll kind of recap on it. Uh, until next time, I'll see you soon. Um, somebody asked, did I bake it, right? Did I bake this? Um, here, uh, I don't like baking models. I like being able to work with my individual components, but really quickly, let's bake it together as one item. Uh, let's turn on all the parts. Because that might be the solution. So baking, let's uh, get all the corners turned on. All right, um, this corner here is straight. Okay, so these are my visible models. In my 3D view, I should have my frame there. Uh, if I bake the selected components into a single model, um, it would help if I select them. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so that's what I want. Uh, and if I bake those, let's see what happens. And then we'll, then we'll say goodbye. Um, 
Okay. So here's our baked model. Okay. It only baked those. That's what it baked. <laughs> All right. That may be uh, one of the 13 repairs in the 10.5.1.2 available version that I have not downloaded. That might be one of the glitches. There was about 13 repairs from 5.09 to 5.1.2. I should keep my software up to date. I will verify that, and we will talk next week on this because that was not what I was expecting at all. So we're gonna undo that baking. Uh, that could be a glitch. I will go in through and update my software and I'll check on that. We will follow up on that next week. All right, guys and girls, until next time, y'all have a great uh, week and we'll see you next week. Uh, hopefully you picked up something out of this, but I will get you an answer on that next week because that has gotten my mind just puzzled. And three hours in, we're gonna have to think about it and I'll talk with Vetric tomorrow. All right, everybody. Until next time, see you soon. Bye now.